starting for your Bulldog defense. At right field, number 19, Carson Chavies. At center field, number 12, Matthew Autry. At left field, number 3, Elijah Ramsey. At first base, number 15, Grant Ross. At second base, number 7, Will Allen Smith. Good afternoon, folks, and happy Sunday from Fesmire Field. We're bringing you the conclusive finale of this three-game series between Union University and the University of West Alabama. There's not a cloud in the sky on this bright but chilly day here in Jackson. It's a cool 44 degrees with a steady 7-mile-per-hour wind heading directly east towards right field. We'll see some of these left-handed batters get a long crack there at the parking lot. The Bulldogs moved to 500 on the season last night. They split the doubleheader and West Alabama outlasted Union to win the first game of that doubleheader last night. The Bulldogs found themselves down 9-1 to one in the fourth inning. Once again, in recent memory, the Bulldogs with a huge deficit early against them, but they began to chip away. An explosive six-run inning pulled the Bulldogs within striking distance before they tied it up in the bottom of the seventh Tigers came back to score in the top of the eighth to beat the Bulldogs 10-9. Will Allen Smith, Carson Chavies, Mitch Sisk, Alec Hardy, Grant Ross, Canyon Pace, and Dylan Barrett all collected a multi-hit game in that loss, but it was Mitch Sisk who was the only Bulldog to record an extra base hit. He hit two doubles in game one. Union once again finding themselves down late came back, rallied, they used their small ball stride, and they overcame a huge early deficit, even though they fell by one. Miller in that game was the winning pitcher for the Tigers, and the loss was handed to Union Junior Ryan Evans. Between the two games, 32 total hits were recorded by both teams. Pretty crazy offensive day there early, but it was not the case in the second game. We had a pitcher's duel. And it was Eli Snelson who twirled a gem for the Bulldogs, pitching his first complete game of the season. Snelson gave up only one run on three hits and an error. Snelson striking out seven Tigers in that impressive Saturday evening start. He earned the win and wiped away a lot of those recent struggles that we've seen him give up on the mound, recovering from the last time he pitched at home, giving up those nine runs early. Not yesterday. He pitched a gem and ended the night on the mound with a beautiful outing through the complete game and got the win. Union got on the board first in that game thanks to a single by the right field to Grant Ross. It brought in Mitch Sisk to score. Alec Hardy scored Union's second run in the fifth inning, and that was the benefactor in the game that gave the Bulldogs a two-run lead heading into the back game of the stretch. West Alabama found their way on the board in the sixth inning as Bryce Newman singled to short right field before eventually being moved around to score on a Houston Kitterman ground out. Eli Snelson induced the double play, struck out the final batter, and recorded the 2-1 victory. And today, as we go down to home plate, it's the rubber game. The Bulldogs hand the ball over to sophomore righty Noah Tony. He enters tonight with a 3.5 ERA through two innings on Tuesday in his last appearance. Gave up only one run, one hit to Henderson State. This is his third start of the season. He's recorded six innings of work. Here's his first pitch. It's going to be down low for a ball. The other side of the field today is senior southpaw for the Tigers, Graham Holland. He's got 2.57 ERA, 0-0 so far in the season, only appearing in two games. So from the stretch early is Tony, transferred to the Bulldogs this season. Pitched at Wallace State Community College in Hansville, Alabama. As a freshman, he accumulated a 3.9 ERA on the mound as a starter, reliever, and closer. Does a little bit of everything. We've seen him primarily as a starter so far this season. He's been in three games, came in relief in one of those. The other two starts, of course, today being his third. Here's his third pitch. It's going to be in there for a called strike. That's against Bryce Newman, the shortstop, who's leading it off for West Alabama. Here is the starting lineup for the Tigers. Batting first and playing shortstop, we got Bryce Newman. Batting second, the center fielder, Kyle Vogler. Batting third, the second baseman, Houston Kitterman. The cleanup hitter and playing third base is Chase Dijon as that ball is hit out towards left field. Elijah Ramsey's underneath it, and he hauls it in for the first out of the game. Good play there with the sunshine. They've got the sunglasses out here today at Fesmeyer Field and not a problem there by Elijah Ramsey. So we were talking about the cleanup hitter, third baseman Chase Dijon batting fifth, the right fielder Blake Vineyard batting sixth, the catcher Ryan Fletcher batting seventh, the designated hitter Nick Thibodeau batting eighth, the first baseman Cade Horton and batting ninth, the left fielder Thomas Watson. Looking into his second batter here is Noah Tony. the delivery Going to be outside and away. Behind the plate tonight is Canyon Pace for the Bulldogs. Getting a good start defensively. He's had a couple big games. Of course, the walk-off about a week and a half ago that really stapled his time in this starting lineup. He and Ben Smith trading 
starts. In a long weekend, that ball has popped directly up. Running back is Canyon Pace. Towards the fans it goes. He's going to have it right behind the dirt circle in the early grass, and he's able to haul it in for the second out and a fly out to Canyon Pace. He's going to retire Vogler. Here's the defensive starters for the Bulldogs. We've got Elijah Ramsey out in left field, Matthew Autry in center. Out in right field is Carson Chavies. Third base is Mitch Sisk. Dylan Barrett playing at shortstop. And interesting here, Will Allen Smith getting the start at second base. He and Alec Hardy have been trading off. Alec Hardy getting most of the starts. Of course, earlier yesterday in that doubleheader, we saw him. But Hardy is going to be the designated hitter after having a huge game yesterday. Went three for five in the first one. Grant Ross over there at first base, and Canyon Pace behind the plate for the Bulldogs. It's going to be the first pitch in there. It's a strike to the second baseman, Houston Kitterman. He's got a 333 batting average on the season and 33 at-bats. He scored nine runs on 11 hits, two doubles, nine RBIs for the Tigers. He's going to take that one, and a good frame job there by Canyon Pace is not going to be enough to convince home plate umpire that it's a strike. We had a great attendance last night. Big day for Union Athletics. The girls softball behind us currently playing two games today. They've got a game at 1 and a game at 3 as soon as the conclusion of the first game. So you might hear a little bit of action and cheering behind us throughout this game. And then, of course, the big basketball games yesterday. Both teams got the win. Both teams rallying from behind. Guys found themselves down quick and worked their way back to take a commanding lead, winning by over 15. Girls team battled all night long, came out second half. Fired up. And everybody got at least one win yesterday for the Bulldogs. A busy weekend here all at home, all here in Jackson. And a fun weekend if you're a Bulldogs fan with a, a lot of excitement, a lot of energy, and a lot of wins. Tony looks in. He's got a three ball, one strike count. Got to fire something in here. He does right down the middle of the pipe. Nice fastball there by Tony. Tony also spent some time at the plate last season, hit 303 in addition to his pitching on the mound, led his team to a conference championship, number 23 rankings in D1 Juco baseball, and that's going to be launched out towards Matthew Autry, charging out on his left, he's going to take it on a one hopper, loses his hat, throws it in, it's Will Allen Smith at second base who cuts it off, and in there with a single will be Kitterman here early in the game. There's some of that. Eastern wind that we mentioned up to 14 mile per hour gusts going to carry everything just a little bit farther than you think. As soon as it was off the bat, it looked like a line drive heading directly towards a 390 sign out in deep center field. But unfortunately for Autry, he just was not quite fast enough to haul it in. They're going to turn it over to the cleanup hitter, third baseman Chase Dijon. Delivery to him is a big swing and a miss. He goes right through that one. Dejan this season, also hitting 333 for the Tigers. And that's going to be in the dirt, a good stop by Canyon Pace to make sure that going nowhere as Kitterman remains over at first base. Kitterman has not had a stolen base attempt so far this season. We'll see if he gets his first one here early in the game in the top of the first. Tony from the stretch will put one right down the middle. A great inside placement pitch there to Dijon. Dijon, the junior at Castle Rock, Colorado. Transfer from the University of Louisiana Monroe, and he's going to take a big swing and a miss through that one, and Tony gets him on strikes. He took four batters, got three outs. No runs, one hit, no errors. 0-0 zero, zero. to the bottom of the first inning we go. We'll be right back with you. Are you looking for a Christian college or starting the college search process? I want to take a second to tell you about my school, Union University in Jackson, Tennessee. Union is a private four-year university known for its rigorous academics, Christ-centered community, and the success of its graduates. My favorite part about Union is the faculty. The professors here are so intentional about helping students grow not only academically, but also spiritually. You should check out Union for yourself. Come for a visit. I know you'll love it. At Union University, you'll be transformed.
Welcome here in the bottom of the first inning. On the mound for the Tigers today is senior left-handed pitcher Graham Holland. He's got a 2.57 ERA. He's appeared and started in two games, getting his third start on the season. He's thrown a combined seven innings so far this year, giving up five hits, three runs, and he's going to face the sophomore Will Allen Smith here to lead things off in the bottom of the first. Smith getting the start in all three games of the doubleheader at second base defensively. Alec Hardy has been hot off the bat, but they moved him to the DH role, giving Smith each of the starts. Here is the starting lineup for the Bulldogs. Batting first, of course, second baseman Will Allen Smith. Batting second, the right fielder Carson Chavies. Batting third, we have the third baseman Mitch Sisk. The cleanup spot is the DH Alec Hardy. Batting fifth, the first baseman Grant Ross. Batting sixth, the catcher Canyon Pace. Batting seventh, the left fielder Elijah Ramsey. Batting eighth, the shortstop Dylan Barrett. And batting ninth, the center fielder Matthew Autry. That's heading out towards the right field wall. Over the head of Vogler is going to be Will Allen Smith, and he is in. He's going to go for three. Here's the throw to the cutoff. It's Kitterman. Makes the throw over to third. Way off the mark. Dejan has it over in the grass. And we'll see. That looks like it's going to be a leadoff triple here for Will Allen Smith as he continues to have a hot bat. In the first game yesterday, he went two for six, had an RBI. Struck out once, but, man, what a great way here to get things started for the Bulldogs in the bottom of the first inning. Just as we were able to get through the starting line up there, Mentioned in the nine hole, we have the center fielder Matthew Autry. We'll see what Graham Holland is able to do here. Runner in scoring position early, Dejon holding him tied at third. And up to the plate, we have Carson Chavies, arguably the hottest hitter so far on the season for the Bulldogs. He's hitting 417 so far this season. He's got 15 hits. He's tied for the most on the season, along with Grant Ross. Got nine runs scored, two doubles. Five RBIs, an opportunity to get another one here as he watches that one in for a called strike. One ball, one strike count. Here's the defensive starters for West Alabama. Dejon at third base, Newman at shortstop, Kitterman at second, Horton at first. In left field, we've got Watson, center field, Vogler, and Vineyard out in right on the mound for Tigers today is Holland. Behind the plate is Fletcher, and their DH is Thibodeau. Infield playing deep, all aside from Horton. The first baseman creeping in for a possible bunt. And that's going to be fouled back right into the netting by Carson Chavies. Graham Holland, the lefty out of West Florida, out of Molina, Florida. Originally his hometown, went to Coastal Alabama Community College North. Made 15 appearances and starting 15. That's going to be out towards center field. Vogler's going to run in. It's going to land on the ground. One run is going to come home to score. That's Will Allen Smith and Carson Chavies is in with a leadoff single. Scores an RBI. Chavies with his sixth RBI of the season. He's able to now take a commanding lead of the hit totals for the Bulldogs. Bringing up Mitch Sisk. He's also recently had a hot bat. We'll see if he can keep things going here. It's Carson Chavies now at first. So two runners already. One comes home to score. And for the first time in a while, the Bulldogs have taken an early lead. They've always been a come-from-behind team the last couple weeks. It was coming from behind. A four-game series they had that was shortened to a three-game stint last weekend. Made things close. Had the walk-off by Canyon Pace on the Friday night. The walk-off by Jake Kale on the Saturday. Bulldogs able to get out here early. We'll see what Mitch Sisk is able to do. Sisk hitting 389. He's second on the team in average. He's got 14 hits, eight runs scored, two long balls. He was the only player for the Bulldogs last night in the first game to get an extra base hit. Everything being reached with errors and small ball singles, multi-hit games for a lot of Bulldogs last night, but Sisk was the only one who was able to Break out and make it around to second base in that nine-run game. I mentioned before the game that there was an impressive 32 combined hits between the two teams. We'll see if we get another one of those here in this nine-inning ball game. And that big swing and a miss there by Mitch Sisk looking for the left field wall. Watson, the left fielder, now adjusting, moving two steps there to his left. Vogler out in center field. Not learning from the lesson of Autry in the top of the first inning that that win does have some significant carry to it. But with a pull hitter like Mitch Sisk, you might as well line up right in the middle. 
as he takes a swing and a miss right through that one. He goes down on strikes, and it'll bring up the cleanup hitter, Alec Hardy. Alec Hardy, the playmaker of yesterday's first game of the doubleheader, he went three for five, had an RBI, scored two runs, and a pickoff attempt there by Holland comes up just short. Carson Chavies. Great attendance last night. Fans starting to roll in. A few dogs at the ballpark today. You see a golden retriever, pear, Dalmatian. And they're going to brave the cold. See lots of blankets, big jackets, personal heaters, a little bit of everything to keep the fans warm here at Fesmeyer Field. Holland from the stretch, going to pick off once again. Keeps throwing to the left-handed side there of his first baseman, Horton, away from Carson Chavies. This is one of the benefits of having a left-handed pitcher. If you are the offense, you can begin to get in his mind, distract him a little bit over there at first. You see Chavies with a commanding lead. Another pickoff attempt there as Chavies slides back in with ease. No chance to get him there as Holland. Chavis trying to be a constant distraction to the senior man on the mound. Alec Hardy will wind up. Dropping in his Dejan at third base. And that's going to be hit out towards right field. Running over his vineyard. Finding him over there is Vogler. And it's going to land about four feet in front of the warning track. Bobbling it is Vogler. Coming around to score is Carson Chavis. He's being waved home. The throw to the plate is going to be way off the mark by about seven feet. And just like that, Alec Hardy has another RBI on the season. That is going to be his seventh RBI so far this year for the Bulldogs. And his impressive season at the plate continues. So Alec Hardy in with a double. Chavis comes from first all the way to home as the Bulldogs take a 2-0 lead here in the bottom of the first inning. Looking to do a little bit more here with Grant Ross. As he has another running, runner in scoring position ready for him. Ross so far this season is eyeing that hit leadership that Carson Chavies has. Chavies with 16 hits on the season. Ross right behind him with 15 with an opportunity here to tie it. So far this year he has a 385 batting average. 15 for 39. And that's going to be outside there to Ross. Alec Hardy went 0 for 2 in the second game going three for five, but Grant Ross turned it on, went one for three, had a walk. In the game two of the doubleheader yesterday as he takes a check swing. About got out the driver on that one, took that one down below the knees. Cue up the wedge if you're going to hit that. So they'll reset way back at the Wallace Vineyard. He's basically almost at the warning track deep in right field. The wind carrying, but a Interesting position there. Vogler, the center fielder, playing right down the middle of the pipe, possibly backing up a pickoff attempt that might sail far. Would lead to that positioning there by the center fielder. So holding Hardy is Newman, sneaking in right behind him. He's going to back off, and the pitch right down the middle of the plate will prevent Grant Ross from taking a four-pitch walk. Good delivery there by Holland. Ross waited on it, not getting the green light with a 3-0. We'll see what he does here with a three ball, one strike count. Ever so creeping slightly there at second base is Hardy. Big lead, and that's going to be outside the zone to set up a force at any base. Hardy still at second. Grant Ross now making his way over to first after the base on balls, and it's going to bring up Canyon Pace. Six, Canyon, Pace. Canyon Pace, the sophomore out of Russellville, Alabama. A Union legacy dad played here is not going to get the play appearance that he thought he would that quickly. There's some action out there in the Tiger bullpen. And after this brief meeting at the mound, it looks like we are going to go to the bullpen here early. We'll be right back with you after this brief pitching change. Bulldogs up by two.
Whatever they went through, they went through together. Welcome, guys. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. When you hear our name, know that it comes with a promise to give back to the community that built us. A promise to provide a human touch in a world that is becoming more automated. Ever since we put our roots down in Jackson in 1996, we have aspired to be community focused by supporting programs and organizations that are important to our city. At First Bank, it is our mission to be present in our community and to continue the belief that when you bank local, you get more. Member FDIC. West Alabama, wasting no time, immediately bringing in a reliever super early in this game. Holland was only able to record a third of an inning. He threw 21 pitches, giving up the two runs, the three hits. Will Allen Smith came home to score on the single by Chavies. Chavies came home to score on the double by Hardy. Grant Ross walked and inheriting two runners. Here is Laney Keaton. Keaton so far this season has a 1.59 ERA. He's got a one win, zero loss record in the five and two thirds innings that he has played in. Showing bunt as Canyon Pace pulls back as it comes towards the number six emblazoned on his jersey. So far this season, we have seen Keaton face 25 batters, four away from the 29 total he faced last year. He went six and two thirds innings last year with a 2.7 ERA and four appearances. He matches that today in his fourth. Delivery is going to be hit out towards left field. Watson's going to run over. He's going to have it on his left side. Tagging up, faking is Alicardi. He shows to make a Quick throw there by Watson out in left field. Hardy stays at second base, and Kenyon Pace is retired on a fly ball out towards left field, bringing up the freshman Elijah Ramsey. Ramsey this season hitting 269. He's got seven hits on 26 at bats, one double, and three RBIs. Earned his spot out there in left field. Aside from Carson Chavies, we've seen a total turnover. A lot of the outfield starters, and Ramsey has been consistently in that left field spot throughout the season. Is he going to hit that one out there towards Watson? Running over underneath it is the left fielder for the Tigers. They strand two, get out of a jam. There is Laney Keaton, but not before the Bulldogs strike Holland early. They're up by two to the top of the second we go after RBIs by Carson Chavies and Alec Hardy. We'll be right back with you. Bulldogs up by two. Your life, your home, your business, your future. Focusing on you, West Tennessee Bank strives to serve its clients in every season of life. With vast experience in personal and business banking, we take pride in guiding you through significant events. At West Tennessee Bank, we help you realize your dreams. West Tennessee Bank is a division of Decatur County Bank, Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. West Tennessee Bank, focused on you. Whatever they went through, they went through together. Welcome, guys. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. Noah Tony comes on for his second inning of work here. He threw only 16 pitches in the top of the first inning, giving up one hit. That was to Kitterman, and now he will face Vineyard, the right fielder, leading off for the Tigers here in the top of the second inning. Vineyard, infielder and outfielder, out of Panama City, Florida. Spent some time at Coastal Alabama North Community College. He graduated from A. Crawford Mosley High School in 2019, where he won the FHSAA All-County and All-State in high school, along with the Best Defensive Player Award. A couple Final Four All-State appearances before going to Coastal Alabama Community College. 
He had 114 hits there, 16 doubles, 6 triples, 10 home runs, and 68 impressive RBIs with a 3-4-3 batting average. And that easily earned him a spot here in the starting lineup for West Alabama so far this season. This year he's hitting 256 in his second season with the Tigers. He's had 39 at-bats, started in 10 games so far. He has three doubles, four RBIs, 10 hits. He's going to take that one in. And a close ball there, almost a hit by pitch. So now a 3-1 count here to Vineyard. Here's a delivery to him. It's going to be hit out towards right field. Running over is going to be Carson Chavies. He's losing it in the sun, and he just gets it right at the last second on his left there. On the glove side, reaching out, extending his full arm. Looked like he lost it in the sun for a brief moment. Recalibrated, set things straight, and was able to go and haul it in. He's going to go give the high five to his center fielder, Matthew Autry. And Vineyard is retired. A tough catch. Of course, you mentioned not a cloud in the sky today. Bright and sunny day, even though it is cold here at Fesmeyer Field in Jackson. We'll see Fletcher get his first plate appearance of the game. Good off-speed curve in there for a called strike from Tony. Fletcher in game one yesterday went two for four behind the plate. And he went 0 for three in the second game of the doubleheader. This season he has played in six games. He's three for 16 with a 188 batting average. We see our infield take a few steps back, ready for a ground ball. There's Tony primarily working all from the stretch. Here's the delivery to him. It's going to be hit towards Mitch Sisk. He's got it in the one shady spot of the infield, throws it over to first. Grant Ross has it, and it's a 5-3 ground out there to quickly retire Fletcher. Mitch Sisk has found the one spot that has the reflection there of shade on the infield. The entire field completely covered in sun, aside from the light post there on the third base side. There's a slight one out there for Eli Ramsey if he wants to find it in left. But Sisk able to haul that one in on a two-hopper on the ground. And then it'll bring up the right-handed designated hitter, Nick Thibodeau. Here's a delivery to him. Just low, good. Placement there by Kenyon Pace, trying to get him to reach out, try to hit something opposite field on the ground. Thibodeau able to resist that one. Thibodeau, the junior, hitting 130 this season. In previous years against the Bulldogs, he's done some damage. Thibodeau out of Burlington, Ontario, Canada. Spent some time at Howard College down in Texas. He's going to take that one upstairs right across the lettering on the jersey. It looked like a pretty good pitch there by Tony. And he's going to find himself with a 3-0 count. Forced to deliver something. Mitch Sisk over at third base taking a few steps back in case there is a green light given to him right down the middle of the pipe. There is Tony. Nick Thibodeau, during his time at Howard College, received his associate's degree in business. Now working on another one here at West Alabama. He was a 2021 conference champion, 43-17 and 17 record in 2021 as he lines that one out towards center field. Running forward is Autry. He's going to have it on the ground, and a single will get things started here with a two-out rally for West Alabama. Thibodeau. Waiting it out, making Tony throw a fastball down the middle. He took full advantage of that one as he just roped it right towards Matthew Autry in center. So Thibodeau at first is going to bring up Cade Horton, the first baseman. Junior batting 400, currently leading the team in batting average. Doesn't have as many at-bats as some of the guys at the top of this lineup, but he does have 30 at-bats. Eight hits so far on the season. He's got three doubles and six RBIs. Putting him down lower in the bottom of this lineup. So he has the opportunity to add a few more RBIs. Thibodeau, an obvious one over there at first base. Here's a delivery and a check swing. He took a, the wrist, threw it forward at home plate. Never really swung the bat, but the umpire did call it a strike. A good placement there by Canyon Pace, the catcher, framing that one right on the outside of the zone. 
Horton said, I didn't swing, but it was a called, called strike anyways. Trying to get another one there as base. Grant Ross standing on the foul side of first base, lining up directly with the base path, left foot forward. Tony not known for a lot of pickoff attempts, but you never know. And that's going to be a check swing and a throw down by Canyon Pace over to first base. Grant Ross able to haul it in, protecting it from rolling out towards Carson Chavies in right field. A good look there by Canyon Pace, just off the mark. And if Tony's not going to pick him off, Canyon Pace said, I'm going to try to do it myself. Thibodeau getting a big jump after each and every pitch over there at first base. Two, two, two here. Two balls, two strikes, two out situation here to the first baseman outside as he takes the count full. Horton's going to take a moment to step out, reset. He's had three walks so far on the season. Struck out four times. It's going to have to be perfect here by Tony. We'll see if he just throws his consistent fastball. He does, and it's going to be just outside the zone. Taking off, of course, was Thibodeau. With a full count, two outs, and Thibodeau will make his way over to second. Horton his way over to first after a walk just outside the zone. Issued to the Tiger first baseman. Now down to the nine hole we go. It's the left fielder Thomas Watson. The sophomore hitting 136 on the season. Watson now a two on. First runner in scoring position here for the Tigers in this game. Take that one up by the shoulder for a ball. Watson out of Vestavia Hills, Alabama. Graduated from Vestavia Hills High School, and here's a delivery to him. A big swing and a miss there. His first season with the Tigers. Hit 136, played seven games, it's three hits and 22 at bats, a slugging percentage of 182, and a big swing and a miss there. It's a one ball, two strike count here early to Watson. Tony looks in, drapes the right arm, looks back, checks his runner Thibodeau at second, and here's a delivery. He's going home, and a big swing and a miss there by Watson. That'll do it. And Tony is able to get out of a jam. We go. To the bottom of the second, a clean inning there. No runs scored. There was two, or one hit, excuse me. That was the single by Thibodeau, a walk issued to Horton. But no runs, one hit, no errors. To the bottom of the second inning we go. Bulldogs up, two to nothing. Don't go anywhere. Dynamics Physical Therapy, your elite provider in sports medicine and performance. Now serving communities throughout West Tennessee. You trade in your car. You trade in your house. So why not get some equity back from your old HVAC system? McCoy's Heating and Air will now give you up to $2,000 trade-in for your old unit. Plus a free 10-year parts and labor warranty with the purchase of a qualifying York system. That's right. Trade in your old unit and get up to $2,000, plus a free 10-year parts and labor warranty. For a limited time, only from McCoy's Heating and Air. Dylan Barrett leading off here for the Bulldogs, the eight hitter. And his stride over at shortstop so far this season takes the first one outside for a ball. Keaton coming on for his second inning of work. He got two-thirds of an inning under his belt in the bottom of the first. Holland struggled early, giving up three hits, two runs on 21 pitches. Tigers were not messing around. They brought in their reliever in Keaton. He came in, slammed the door on any more potential damage. 
on the two runs that he in, or two runners that he inherited, and he quickly was able to get Canyon Pace and Elijah Ramsey to fly out to left field. Barrett now leading off third baseman. Dejan closing in. That's going to be opposite field in off the hands towards a chopper out towards right field. It's Vineyard underneath it. And it is going to be bobbled and dropped there by the second baseman, Kitterman. Kitterman called off Vineyard, who has full custody of that ball if he wants it. He's got the priority out in right field. And as all three of those guys were crashing in, Barrett was able to sneak in. We'll see how they credit that. They're going to say it is a single issued to Barrett. Vineyard, Kitterman, and Horton were all in their shallow right field collapsing in on each other. We wonder if the sun did play a little bit of a factor in it. But right as Vineyard was about to haul it in, Kitterman called it off, and off it went of his glove. So now there's a runner on. It's Dylan Barrett. Matthew Autry showing bunt, drops it perfectly towards the pitcher. Keaton's going to take it himself, throws it over to first, and it's going to be a fielder's choice. Looks like it's going to be a ground out there, a sacrifice, move him over out from Matthew Autry to get his runner, Dylan Barrett, to second base. So Barrett now moves over to second. Autry, 1-3 ground out is how they are going to score that. And to the top of the lineup we go. It's Will Allen Smith who got everything started in the bottom of the first with a huge triple out towards right field. Will he do it again? He's got a runner in scoring position. Barrett creeping off second. Kitterman, the second baseman, is going to be the one holding him. And Smith will take a moment to take a called strike one. Smith recorded his first extra base hit of the season in the first inning. That triple was his opportunity to get something more than the singles he's had, three of them to be exact. Getting his fourth start of the season. He's appeared in seven games now for the Bulldogs. Keaton now checking back from the stretch. Kitterman. Baiting a pickoff attempt. He's got to throw it back to avoid getting the bot call. No chance there to get Barrett, who glides easily back to second base. So Smith with a big windup opens up his stance a little bit. The left leg dropping. He's going to take a moment to pause. Goes back to his load-up formation. Kitterman faking once again there at second base, and they're going to go home with it. An off-speed pitch just off the shoulders there of Smith will not be able to get it. So will Allen will queue up here for another pitch from Keaton. Smith at a Trinity Christian Academy here in Jackson, Tennessee. Right down the road. That's going to be hit out towards right field over the first base dugout into foul territory. Over by the tarp, running over is the first baseman, Horton. It'll bounce off the tarp, out towards right field, roll back to where Vineyard was playing. And Smith has an opportunity to stay alive as that landed in a fortunate position there for him. So Smith, a sophomore. Got a little bit of playing time last season for the Bulldogs. He played in 18 games, started in nine of those. A lot of those doubleheader games, he'd come in, switch off with Alec Hardy, as he's done this weekend. Hit 242 last season, had 33 at-bats. That's going to be launched out towards center field, a bad pickoff attempt, but Dylan Barrett on his knees, sliding back to second, will have no opportunity to advance. Everybody will take a breath here as Vogler hauls it into shallow center field. First pickoff attempt there by Keaton, who's had quite a few. But he really launched that one out towards center field. No opportunity there by Kinderman to get him. Will Allen Smith slowing things down here at the plate. Two balls, two strikes to count to him. And he's going to go home with it. It's going to be upstairs, ball three. So the count goes full. Barrett's still out there. Alan Smith, we look back to this week last year, three days and a year. Will Allen Smith got his first collegiate start. That game was against Lane College, and he hit two home runs, kicking things off for his career. As he takes ball four, heads over to first base, and to Carson Chavies we go. Smith aboard with a walk. After the single by Barrett, basically exactly what the Tigers did in the top of the second inning. 
Thibodeau had the single, Horton with the walk, and now we have Barrett with the single and Smith with the walk. Carson Chavies, the left and a junior. Horton, the first baseman, standing directly in front of Will Allen Smith, basically blocking his view of home plate. Ready to charge in. If Chavies tries to drop a bunt to move it over, like Autry did earlier in the inning. Odds of that, not super high. Chavies does have a bit of power in his bat. The win to his assistance today. Vineyard way out deep and right, and both runners are going to go. He's going to put it in play. First baseman Horton's going to grab it, throw it to his pitcher. It's going to be a race to first, and they're going to say he's out, but not before Dylan Barrett takes an aggressive base path approach and scores from second base. While well, all the commotion was happening over there at first, to get out Carson Chavies, he's going to record an RBI. Barrett goes from second to home. Smith makes his way to second to move into scoring position, and the Bulldogs add another run on the board here in the bottom of the second inning. So Chavies will be credited with a 3-1 ground out but not before he's able to get the RBI, bringing up Mitch Sisk, the third baseman for the Bulldogs. He struck out swinging in his first Plate appearance, has another runner on in this one. He a big swing there as he takes a cut. Swing upwards, trying to get a launch angle high and out. Here by the Bulldog third baseman. And then just swinging through a line drive. He was really launching that one. The mountain of a swing there, trying to jack it over the left field wall. Kitterman, the second baseman, playing close to second. He's going to run in, and they're going to have to throw it down to second base. Keaton looking back. No opportunity there. So Will Allen Smith, the second baseman, standing on second base for the Bulldogs offensively. Kitterman holding him tight. Mitch Sisk, an opportunity here. Get his seventh RBI of the season. And here's a delivery to him. It's going to be out towards left field. Running over Swanson, it's going to be just fair. Will Allen Smith rounding third. He's going to come home to score. Sisk making his way to second. Cut off by the shortstop, Newman. And he's going to throw the ball away to the first baseman, Horton, who grabs it. And it's going to be another two runs. Two runs in the bottom of the first. Two runs here in the bottom of the second. And Mitch Sisk has an RBI double. He just stands out there on second. He traded places with Will Allen Smith, who came home on that. And a two-out rally here. Big assistance there by Carson Chavies. You see that move him over, ground out, make even more of a difference and an influence. Of course, Smith probably unable to score on that had Chavies not moved him over. So everybody contributes here, and it brings up Alec Hardy with a ball low below the knees. So Sisk now at second. Barrett came home to score after he singled. Smith scores on the walk. And Alec Hardy, who had the extra base double in the bottom of the first inning, scoring Carson Chavies, will have another opportunity here with Mitch Sisk as the runner on this time. Here's a delivery to him. He's going to hit it into play. It's going to be the third baseman, Deshaun. Easily takes a one-hopper, throws it over to first. Hurton's got it. And a 5-3 ground out will retire Alec Hardy and put an end to the two-out rally here by the Bulldogs in the bottom of the second inning, but not before Smith and Barrett can come home to score. They put two more on the board, two in the bottom of the first, two in the second. 4 nothing Bulldogs to the top of the third we go. Don't go anywhere here in Jackson, Tennessee. Whatever they went through, they went through together. Welcome, guys. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you.
When you hear our name, know that it comes with a promise to give back to the community that built us. A promise to provide a human touch in a world that is becoming more automated. Ever since we put our roots down in Jackson in 1996, we have aspired to be community focused by supporting programs and organizations that are important to our city. At First Bank, it is our mission to be present in our community and to continue the belief that when you bank local, you get more. Member FDIC. Back to the top of the lineup we go with the leadoff hitter Bryce Newman, the shortstop, getting his second look here at Noah Tony. Tony now going through the lineup for his second time in this game. He's done 39 pitches, two hits, two innings recorded so far, walked one, struck out two, and only faced nine batters. Newman flew out to left field in his first plate appearance, and he's going to pop that one out towards right field, towards the field house parking lot into foul territory. And with a 344 average entering this game, 11 hits on 33 at bats, scored 10 runs, 2 RBIs. There's 9 walks, 5 strikeouts so far on the season. He went out of Phoenix City, Alabama, spent some time at Lawson State Community College. Graduate from Glenwood High School. Here's a delivery to him. Upstairs, almost gets a piece of his helmet as he jumps out of the way just in time. Before coming to West Alabama, he spent some time down there at Lawson State where he scored 51 hits, 28 runs, 36 RBIs. 2022, hit three home runs. He's going to hit that one out towards right field. Going over is Grant Ross and Carson Chavies in foul territory. It's going to hit right by where the turtle is in front of the bullpen. Nowhere to go is Carson Chavies. And having second life, here is Newman in the third. So Bulldogs once again just using the easy singles, doubles, taking long plate appearances. They were very aggressive last season. They've started to wait it out, try to hit the line drives. It's exactly what they've done. Mitch Sisk and Alec Hardy both having doubles, and that's going to be hit out towards center field. Running in this Autry, he's going to take it on a ground ball towards center, and Newman is aboard with a single here to lead off the top of the third inning. That is his 12th hit of the season, and we go to senior center fielder Kyle Vogler. Batting now, number 23, Kyle Vogler. Vogler popped it up right behind home plate during the first inning. Moonshot skyscraper directly up to Canyon Pace, who waited on it, waited on it, waited on it, thought it almost was a souvenir for the fans, but Pace was able to haul it in behind home plate. And here's going to be the pitch. It's going to roll away from the glove of Pace, squeezed out just like a ice cream cone, it looked like there at the end of Canyon Pace's glove. This rolls down the first baseline. Nowhere going is Newman. Tony will take a breather, get back. Very shallow there is Mitch Sisk at third base. Standing there on the ground, ready for a ball, and that's going to be over towards first base. Ross is going to run over. We'll see if Will Allen Smith, the second baseman, calls him off. He will, and making a diving grab right in foul territory is Will Allen Smith, the second baseman, calling off Carson Chavies and Grant Ross. Makes a great play on the ball there in foul territory towards right field. And with another foul ball popped out into foul territory, Vogler is now retired for the second time today. And Houston Kitterman will now have an opportunity. With one runner on, one out. He singled in the top of the first inning. Ross holding Newman over at first base. And he's going to go. Runner going, and it's going to be hit out towards center field. Matthew Autry underneath it, running back to first, will be Newman. He's stuck in the middle, and he is not going to be able to advance. Autry with a long throw back to first. Tries to get the double play. But the hit and run unable to work here for the Tigers in the third inning. That's just a little bit too high. Getting up underneath that. Kitterman launched out towards center field and a good play there by Matthew Autry to keep the runner at first base and to put a second out on the board here for the Bulldogs in the top of the third inning. 
Cleanup hitter Chase Dijon having an opportunity. Senior hitting 333 this season. Has 12 hits, struck out swinging in the first inning. Leads the team in hits. Fourth and runs. Has a double, nine RBIs. He leads the team in RBIs as well. The slugging percentage of 361, three walks, seven strikeouts on the season. Got his eighth in the first inning. Tony turning over to his backside. Pickoff attempt there by Newman. Saw Newman take off running. Didn't look as much as a steal attempt as it did look like a hit and run. It just didn't pan out for West Alabama. And going again. Here's the throw down by Canyon Pace. It's going to be off the mark. A good tag play there by Will Allen Smith, the second baseman. They're trying to give the Bulldogs a chance at getting the throw down. But it's going to be a stolen base issued to Newman. As he moves into scoring position, the second Tiger to do so in this game. No swing at that by Dejan, and a huge lead now there by Newman. He's almost playing shortstop there in the middle of the diamond. Canyon Pace probably could have had a chance at that if he would have thrown it to the glove side of Willon Smith, but having to make a across the body tag just came up short. And it leaves the runner on with two outs. So two balls, one strike, two outs. The count to Dejan. He's rocking back and forth, and here's the pitch. Right down the middle of the pipe for his second called strike. So two balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner on second. Smith giving the signal to Canyon Pace. A possible pickoff attempt. We don't anticipate one here with two strikes. Tony's going to go home with it. It's going to be right to the glove of the first baseman, Grant Ross. He's got it. Barely has to move. He was shifting over, and a little floater will end the inning here for the Tigers. They get one aboard. They leave him stranded. That's Newman. To the bottom of the third inning we go. Bulldogs up by four. We'll be right back with you here in Jackson. Your life. Your home. Your business. Your future. Focusing on you, West Tennessee Bank strives to serve its clients in every season of life. With vast experience in personal and business banking, we take pride in guiding you through significant events. At West Tennessee Bank, we help you realize your dreams. West Tennessee Bank is a division of Decatur County Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. West Tennessee Bank, focused on you. box they've announced the first defensive substitution for the Tigers in this game they're going to make a change out in left field bringing in Will Wood take over out there in left up to the plate is Grant Ross Ross so far this season with a 385 batting average goes 15 for 39 he leads the team in RBIs with 11 took a walk in the first and was left stranded there now getting his second plate appearance against Laney Keaton from the full windup, it's going to be inside down. It's Ross. Nobody warming up there for the Bulldogs. Noah Tony having a great outing so far. Three clean innings, three hits given up. But there is a lot of action out there in the West Alabama bullpen. Got three guys out there doing stretches, two guys warming up. We'll see how much longer they leave Keaton in. In this game, he has thrown 20 pitches, one behind Holland, who started on the mound for the Tigers. Keaton giving up two hits, two runs in the inning and two-thirds that he's thrown, and Grant Ross is going to take that, and they're going to ring him up on it. Uh, very low and inside pitch there by Grant Ross, but it's going to be enough to call strike three. So Ross goes down looking 
And that'll be the first out of the inning. Ross clearly frustrated with that. Has a conversation in the dugout with Coach Casey. Shaking his head and Casey shaking it right back. Looks like they're kind of talking. Casey saying if it's close, you got to swing at it. I'd love to have a mic'd up situation of how that conversation is going there in the third base dugout. Canyon Pace now up to the plate. He faced Laney Keaton in the first inning. He was the first batter that he faced. Flew out to left field. That's going to be away there. It's Canyon's going to wait on that one. Pace with six RBIs on the season. Has the bases clean for him. Looking to get some start in off speed. Gets him with a swing and a miss there for strike two against the Bulldog catcher. Kitterman and Newman both dropping back towards the grass. Kitterman playing closer to second than the shortstop is. And it looks like Canyon Pace got a little piece of it, but it's going to be a swinging strike three. Back to back, a pair of strikeouts. Ross and Pace both go down swinging by Keaton as he starts to find his groove here in the bottom of the third inning, bringing up Elijah Ramsey, who also flew out to end the first inning. They left two runners stranded in the first inning when Keaton came on in relief of Holland. He'll face Ramsey now for a second time. The third baseman, Dejon, playing in on the grass of the infield. Ready for something on the ground, opposite field. Here's a delivery way outside there. A swing and a miss by Ramsey. He was chasing it. And had he got a piece of it, there's a good chance that the third baseman, Dejon, would have been the guy to receive it. So from the full windup, a big stance there by the pitcher, and that's going to be hit over the third base dugout. Foul ball there by the Bulldog left fielder, Elijah Ramsey. Ramsey with a 1-2 count, loads up, squats down low in the batter's box, and he's going to hit that one over the third base dugout foul just where the last one was. A couple souvenirs out there as the Bulldog Retrieval crew goes to get those balls back. Umpire running low here as he replaces the holster of Keaton. So here's the delivery. Ramsey's going to put that one over the third base dugout once again. That one just a little bit farther down the left field line. And approximately five or six more pitches. That one might be a fair ball out towards left as he continues to stay alive. That's the reason why we see Dejon, the third baseman, creeping in in preparation for something down the line. And it is exactly that towards the first base. And four straight foul balls as Ramsey continues to battle here for the Bulldogs. In the bottom of the third, he's got two outs against him. An opportunity here for Keaton to have a three-up, three-down inning. It will be the Tigers' first of the game, and here's the full windup to him. It's going to be hit right past the mound. Newman's going to field it at shortstop, throws it over to first, and it's going to be a 6-3 ground out and a great play there by the Tigers' shortstop to retire Ramsey. Three-up, three-down, clean slate here for Keaton to the bottom of or to the top of the fourth inning we go. Excuse me, here in Jackson, Bulldog to the 4 nothing lead. Whatever they went through, they went through together. Welcome, guys. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. Dynamics Physical Therapy, your elite provider in sports medicine and performance. Now serving communities throughout West Tennessee. Kicking off the top of the fourth inning will be the right fielder, Vineyard. Takes the first pitch 
from Noah Tony for a little ride down the third base line. Tony throwing 53 pitches in this game. Giving up three hits, three innings pitched so far. Struck out two, walked one in this game. Vineyard, the right fielder, trying to get on with a check swing. Vineyard getting his second plate appearance here against Noah Tony. He flew out to right field. Carson Chavis hauled that in the top of the second inning. Tony from the stretch. Here's a delivery to him. A good curveball off speed. Will drop in there for Vineyard. <clears throat> Blake Vineyard, the senior, hitting 256, 10 hits and 40 at bats so far on the season. He's got four RBIs, four strikeouts, and four walks. Constant number here of four as he puts that one down the third baseline. Bulldog, third base coach, unable to haul that one in. He just lets that one sneak all the way down. So Tony will take a moment, get a new sign from Canyon Pace, adjust his glove. Reach in, likes the call, and he's going to have a two-ball, two-strike delivery here to Vineyard. It's going to be a swing and a miss. He gets him, and right up inside on the wrist, and Vineyard goes down swinging. A great pitch placement there. A good call there by Canyon Pace. And Tony has another strikeout, his third of the day. Batting out number two, Ryan Fletcher. So as the Bulldogs take it around the horn, Bring up Ryan Fletcher, catcher. Hit 188 on the season. He grounded out, and that's going to be out towards center field. One pitch, one fly ball. Matthew Autry is underneath it in center field, and an easy play there by the Bulldog center fielder. Doesn't even need to move, and Fletcher hits it right to him, a magnet out there in center field for the second out of the inning. Will Allen Smith goes and stands on second base, grabs an arrow from his makeshift quiver, and fakes launching one over the right field wall in a celebratory effort there by the defense. And a fun celebration there by Will Allen Smith, the second baseman. As we now face the third batter of the inning, it's going to be Thibodeau. Nick Thibodeau in the DH role today. He had the single in the second inning. So far, the Tigers have had one single in each inning. That's about it. We'll see what Thibodeau is able to do here. Delivery to him. Outside, caught by Canyon Pace. Thibodeau this season struggling a little bit more at the plate than we've seen him do in recent years. He's hitting 130 in his junior year. He's at 23 at-bats, three hits. Recorded his fourth in the second. Here's a delivery. It's going to be low and down. Canyon Pace is going to switch out the ball. Dust it off, get a clean one. We'll see if Tony's able to go three up, three down. Something the Bulldogs haven't seen yet today. There's some action out there in the left field bullpen. Looks possibly like Lane Evans or Ethan Orwig up here from the press booth. We'll see if the Bulldogs will hit that next inning or wait. And that's going to be over the right field dugout out towards the parking lot in Fesmire Field. Lots of action here behind us at the softball game. we got a tie game here in the fourth inning. It's 1-1 behind us as the girls are locked into that tight seventh inning game. Bulldogs came back to walk it off late last night. One of the exciting games in Union Athletics. And here's a delivery that's going to be an off speed that looked like it got away from him. And the umpire rings him up on strikes. Clearly frustrated and clueless there is Thibodeau as he throws his hands, questioning the decision-making of the umpire. Tony wasn't overly confident that that was a strike. He kind of just stood there on the mound waiting for the call. And just like that, Thibodeau goes down on strikes. Four strike out of the game. We'll be right back with you here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Bulldogs up by four. We'll see if they can add a few more. We'll be right back with you. Are you looking for a Christian college or starting the college search process? I want to take a second to tell you about my school, Union University in Jackson, Tennessee. Union is a private four-year university known for its rigorous academics, Christ-centered community, and the success of its graduates. My favorite part about Union is the faculty. 
The professors here are so intentional about helping students grow not only academically, but also spiritually. You should check out Union for yourself. Come for a visit. I know you'll love it. At Union University, you'll be transformed. here to lead off the bottom of the fourth inning. It's the shortstop Dylan Barrett getting his second plate appearance here against Laney Keaton. Barrett led off the bottom of the second inning where he singled, came around to score. Kitterman, the second baseman, shifting over and he's going to put that one in play. His second single of the day right through the gap between Dejan and Newman. It'll go out towards left field and Barrett has back-to-back -back singles here against Keaton in this game. And it only took him one pitch, and he's aboard with a single here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And it'll be Matthew Autry. Autry moved over Barrett in the second inning on a sacrifice ground out bunt. He dropped it to Keaton. We'll see if he does the same thing. It surely worked in the second inning. You can only anticipate them trying it again here in the fourth. And he is going to pull back and... He showed it right there, was ready to drop it, and Keaton threw a heater right down the pipe, just a little bit high, and Autry pulling back at the last possible second. Fletcher faking a throw over to first base as Barrett is ready to take over. Pickoff attempt, great placement there by the righty on the mound. Keaton threw that one over to Horton, had a really good throw down, lots of speed on that pickoff attempt, but right underneath it was the freshman Dylan Barrett. So Barrett over there at first with a lead. We'll see if Autry shows bunt. He does, pulls it back once again. We wonder if that bunt is more strategically to get in the mind of Keaton. It worked in the second inning to move him over. Charging in is Dejan. Autry dropped it back to Keaton in the second inning. Just a little dribbler back to the mound. We'll see if he can try to drop it more down the third baseline this time. Matthew Autry does have a significant amount of speed and Horton grabbed the pickoff attempt and slapped Barrett in the top of the helmet with it. Interesting behavior there by the Tiger first baseman. So Barrett not going. Looking over is going to be another pickoff attempt. It's going to be thrown away out towards right field turtle. And they're going to say it is out of play. Barrett will advance one base. And no longer is a force going to happen. So Matthew Autry now has the ability to take a swing at things unless he wants to move his runner to third. We'll see if he tries to show bunt, drop one down the third base line, but he might use it strategically to get on to first base more than just move the runner over. He's got an opportunity here. Runner in scoring position. That's Barrett. He goes and checks in at second base. And after about the sixth or seventh pickoff attempt, it felt like he launched. It's going to be down third base. It's going to go foul. So two balls, one strike. Autry makes it all the way to first base before they call him back to home plate. So we'll see if Autry's going to load up and swing here. He's got three hits on 19 at bats so far this season in the nine hole. He's played a significant amount of center field, trading off with Eli Snelson. Snelson threw the complete game last night. And there's going to be another pickoff attempt that's going to go way out towards center field. Barrett's going to take off towards third, and they're going to send him back to second. Barrett probably could have had third base. Vogler was playing way deep, and Keaton threw that ball before Newman was even having a chance to get there. It was Kitterman, the second baseman, that was able to get to the bag. Just a miscommunication there by the middle infielders on the pickoff attempt. Creates a, another possible 
advantage there for the Bulldogs. Barrett holding up. And we'll see here if Autry shows him up. Once again, he does. He's going to drop that right down the third baseline. Great placement. Grabbing it is going to be Dijon. He throws it over to first. And they're going to say that Autry is out just in time. He had a really good run there, trying to sneak a single out of it. But a good play there by Dijon, the third baseman, just in the nick of time, is able to retire Autry. So he's got two move him over bunts so far. And after all of that, there's only one out here in the bottom of the fourth inning going to the top of the order, not where you want to be if you're the Tigers, with Will Allen Smith coming up to the plate. He tripled, came around to score to lead things off in the top of the first inning. In the second inning, he walked, and they're going to try to protect home plate as the infield all moves in, all four of them on the grass. We'll see if Will Allen Smith is able to sneak something through. Dylan Barrett over there at third base taking an aggressive lead, charging in. Newman and Kitterman both in on the grass, ready for a throw to home, and we'll see if Will Allen Smith can put some heat on the ball and sneak one past here. Put everything you got. The second baseman, Kitterman, running over towards the bag once he realizes that there's not going to be a bunt. Fully anticipate Will Allen Smith being a pull hitter, even though his triple was an opposite field. Fly ball out towards the right center wall. Keaton now from the stretch will take it home. And there's going to be a bunt. It's going to be straight up in the infield. Keaton's got it himself. And Will Allen Smith unable to execute the bunt, trying to score Barrett. And a rough break there as a bunt turns into a pop out as Will Allen Smith becomes the second victim. Here's Keaton in the fourth inning. Carson Chavis has had two great plate appearance already in this game. In the top of the first inning, he singled, came around to score on the double by Hardy. And then in the second inning, he had the RBI ground out to score. And that's going to be out to second base. Kitterman's got it. The runner home doesn't matter. And a 4-3 ground out will leave. Barrett, 90 feet away from scoring. Bulldogs are still up by four to the top of the fifth we go here in the second hour of this ball game at Fesmeyer Field on the campus of Union University. Dynamics Physical Therapy, your elite provider in sports medicine and performance. Now serving communities throughout West Tennessee. top of the fifth inning we go. Cade Horton, junior first baseman, will be leading things off here for the Tigers as he faces Noah Tony with a foul ball. Big swing attempt there after that Eli Ramsey out in left field. Takes a few more steps back as Horton looked to get all and everything about that pitch. Tony's going to load up here from the stretch. He's on for another inning of work. He's had a great start so far for the Bulldogs. He entered this game with a 13.50 ERA, and he's just been knocking that down already. He has six combined innings coming into this game, and he's already in his fifth inning of this one. He's completed 10 for the season. He's thrown 64 pitches, giving up three hits in this one, and that one about gets to the feet there. Now loading up here will be Horton. Here's the 
Pitch to him, and that's going to be out towards left field. Going back is Ramsey. Towards the wall, he's going to be underneath it, and he's got it out there in left field. A great play there by the Bulldog left fielder to retire one out here in the top of the fifth inning and calling off Autry right there in the crack of the left center wall. You can see the shade on the left and the sun purely on the center field wall. Will Wood will get his first plate appearance of the game. Highest number of the team so far, number 49. And Watson now exits the game. Watson struck out swinging in the second inning. We wonder if it was just a defensive substitution, an offensive substitution, or possibly an injury. We hope the best for Watson, who exits the game. Wood came on to relieve him in left field and now enters to relieve him at the plate just as well. Will Wood, the left fielder. Out of Goodman, Mississippi, went to Southeast Lauderdale High School. Graduated there in 2022. 2019-2022 division champion. A 22 and 12 record, 24 and 11 record the other years. All state team member, multiple years, had a 504 batting average in high school. Looking to make his mark here this season with the Tigers in his first year. He's hitting 333 so far. For West Alabama, he's had six at-bats, getting his seventh right now. Scored three runs on two hits. Mitch Sisk, the third baseman, playing it on the grass. They're ready for a ground ball on the right side. Will Allen Smith, the second baseman, getting ready. As Tony recovers with a no green light, there to Wood. Eight, nine, and one batters up this inning. And here's the delivery to Wood. It's going to be outside ball four. And Tony will now walk his first batter of the game. Or actually, second batter, excuse me, second batter of the game. So Wood will make his way over to first base. Coming out to check here on Noah Tony will be Coach Casey. We'll see if we go to the mound or just a brief check-in conversation. We'll be right back with you. Bulldogs up by four, one out here in the top of the fifth inning. Don't go anywhere. Whatever they went through, they went through together. Welcome, guys. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. When you hear our name, know that it comes with a promise to give back to the community that built us. A promise to provide a human touch in a world that is becoming more automated. Ever since we put our roots down in Jackson in 1996, we have aspired to be community focused by supporting programs and organizations that are important to our city. At First Bank, it is our mission to be present in our community and to continue the belief that when you bank local, you get more. Member FDIC. The Bulldogs' first charge meeting at the mound here for Noah Tony. They're going to leave him in. And to the top of the lineup we go for Newman's third plate appearance of the game here in the fifth inning. He flew out to left field in the top of the first. In the top of the third inning, he singled. He was left stranded at second base as he was moved over. On a wild pitch. Actually, that was a stolen base, I think. He was either wild pitch or stolen base. Made his way over to second base in the top of the third where he was left stranded, and now he's got another opportunity here with a runner on. That's going to be Wood over at first, and a pickoff attempt there by Noah Tony. He's going to come up just short. Grant Ross, the first baseman, hauling that in. Mitch Sisk charging in. We'll see if the Tigers take a similar approach to the two unions, see if they'll try to drop a bunt here. With their leadoff guy, he's hitting 344 so far this season. Here is a delivery to him. It's going to be out towards center field. Dropping back towards the track is Matthew Autry. He's tracing it to his left. He's underneath it, hauls it in, throws it in to the second baseman, Smith. And he is able to 
get the second out of the inning. So Newman that goes down on a fly ball out to center. Wood still the runner at first. We'll see Vogler. Flown out twice so far in this game. Get his third plate appearance. He popped it up to the catcher Canyon Pace in the first inning on that sky ball directly up. Basically did the same thing in the third inning. He hit it out towards foul territory and an interesting play there by the Bulldogs. So Tony throws it down to home. It's way out. The runner got caught lacking a little bit over there. That was Wood. A good play there by Canyon Pace. He basically threw a ground ball throw down attempt. Grant Ross thought that he had him, but the umpire said that he was safe. So the runner stays on. Two outs. And it's going to be another ball outside here to Vogler. So two balls, no strikes, two outs the count. Canyon Pace faking another throw down. So we see the middle infield prepare for a play at second base. That's going to be just outside the zone to take the count to three balls, no strikes here to Vogler. So one runner on, that's Wood in his first plate appearance. Of the game, he took the walk against Tony. And now we've got a couple guys warming up out there in the left field bullpen for the Bulldogs. So here's a delivery. It's going to be right down the middle of the plate. No green light given for a swing to Vogler. And three ball, one strike, two out count against the center fielder for the Tigers. So Tony's going to look over, gets the pitch, likes it, going to throw over for a pickoff attempt, not going to land. Sliding in easily as Wood. You see Mitch Sisk, the third baseman, just keep getting closer and closer towards home plate. Now it's going to be an opportunity for Wood to swing. Umpire's going to grant time to the batter. Reach in. Grab something out of his back pocket. Looks like he's got his book. Not sure totally what is going on here with the home plate umpire. He's going to take a moment. Pause. Maybe write a journal entry here for this Sunday afternoon. Beautiful day. Not a cloud in the sky, but it is chilly. Around 40 degrees is hovering. We anticipate by the end of the game it will be up to about 45 degrees, but it has been a cold one last night. They sold out a hot chocolate down at the concession stand. I saw the graduate assistants go running in towards the gym looking for more Swiss Miss packets. They were able to get it. They said that was their number one selling item. Full house here at the Fez last night, and they said they got the hot chocolate down there brewing once again today here on this cold and chilly Sunday. Wood on that last pitch took off running. Of course, three balls, two strikes, full count, and it's going to be hit towards the third base dugout foul. So runner's going to go with full count and two outs. Fouling that off is Vogler. Continues to stay alive at the plate. Started this at bat with a 3-0 count. Tony has worked his way back in it. Three balls, two strikes. With a couple consistent foul balls here by Vogler. Tony looks to ring him up. That's going to be in on the hands. Ball four issued to Vogler. And it's going to put two on here as Coach Casey will most likely remove Tony and go to the bullpen for the first time in this game. He looks out towards left field, gives the throw out to the bullpen. And we're going to have our first pitching change for the Bulldogs. Two on, two outs. We'll be right back with you here after this brief pitching change. Your life, your home, your business, your future. Focusing on you, West Tennessee Bank strives to serve its clients in every season of life. With vast experience in personal and business banking, we take pride in guiding you through significant events. At West Tennessee Bank, we help you realize your dreams. West Tennessee Bank is a division of Decatur County Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. West Tennessee Bank, focused on you. 
the award-winning Ball Game Blitz Sports Network from Worthy Road Studios. Over 750,000 views in 2023. We're where you need to advertise. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and join over 4,500 subscribers watching local sports. The Jackson Rockabillies, Union University, Bethel, USJ, TCA, Jackson Christian, Sacred Heart, and Peabody. Multi-camera broadcasts, slow motion instant replay, on-screen scoreboard and graphics, and professional announcers. Thanks to our sponsors who make it all possible. The Ball Game Blitz Sports Network from Worthy Road Studios. The premier sports broadcast network in West Tennessee. Bulldogs will go to their bullpen. A great outing today by Noah Tony, his longest of the season. He went four and two-thirds innings, throwing 82 pitches, gave up three hits, walking three. Two of them are on base right now as they turn the keys over to the sophomore right-handed pitcher Lane Evans. His brother was the pitcher of record, and that was Ryan last night in the first game. He received the loss, and we'll see if Lane is able to make his mark on this game. He's got a four-nothing cushion. Bulldogs hope to increase that here in the bottom of the fifth inning, but threatening to strike here is the Tigers with two outs. Lane Evans last season started in 11 games, made 16 total appearances at 10.13 ERA and recorded 26 strikeouts. So far in this season, he's having a great year. He had a 4.5 ERA. He's given up only nine hits, four runs, thrown eight innings so far. They've used him mostly in relief. He came in as a starter as a freshman last year, but it's really... Found his way in the bullpen. They'll come and bring him into a couple different games. Last time he pitched was on Tuesday against Henderson State. Threw two innings in that game, giving up three hits. Young Harris on February 2nd, he went four innings. So far this season, he's got a no win, one loss record but has been able to keep his control a little bit better than he did last season. So here's the delivery, Ray up high. And it's going to be three straight balls here from the Union righty. An interesting decision there by Coach, Co Coach Casey to go to the bullpen after Tony just falters a little bit. He was able to get two outs. But going here to Evans, interesting decision. Great pitch there by Lane right down the middle of the pipe, strike one. So three balls, one strike. We've got Wood at... Second base, Vogler at first, both reaching on a walk by Tony. Newman flew out to center field. Horton flew out to right field. And it's going to be ball four here issued as the bases are now loaded. Coach Casey's going to come out, give the outfielders their situation. He's telling them to move back, and they're all going to step back as we go to the cleanup hitter here which is the tying run at the plate. Wood goes to third, Vogler goes to second, Kitterman now at first base. All three of them walked. And now we see Dejan, the third baseman, come up to the plate with bases loaded. A good frame attempt there by Canyon Pace, unable to get the call. Dejan in the first inning struck out swinging. In the top of the third, he hit a line drive to the first baseman, Grant Ross, to end the inning. And we'll see if he can do the same thing, hopefully here, in the fifth, infield starting to play deeper. Force any bag, including home plate, wherever you can take it. And it's going to be in there for a called strike one against Dijon. One ball, one strike, two outs. Base is loaded. Middle infielders Smith and Barrett dropping back after holding second base close. So the Ducks are on a punt. Here's the pitch to Dijon. A big swing and a miss there as it slips right under the bat of the Tiger third baseman. He might have got a little piece of that as it went directly down in the dirt. So now one ball, two strikes. Lane Evans got the bases loaded, enters this game. He inherits two runners from Tony, and we'll see if he can put them away. Bulldogs looking to escape without giving up a run here. Their pitching has really dialed it in the last two games, and that's going to be outside, taking the count to two balls and two strikes here against Dejan. Smith will head back more towards the right field grass over there at second base. Grant Ross, the first baseman, playing deep behind the runner Kitterman, and it's going to go home. And a swing and a miss. They're going to say it's a foul ball. It looked like a really good pitch there by Lane Evans. I probably would have swung at that one too, and Dejan stays alive. They say that he got just a piece of it. It goes down in the home plate umpire. 
He's going to let him have another chance at it here. With a two ball, two strike, two out count. Bases are loaded, and here's the pitch by Evans. An off speed just outside of the zone. Good curve placement there by Lane Evans. Canyon Pace thought that he had strike three. And now we'll see what Lane Evans does. You don't want to walk in a runner, but you don't want to leave a cookie right over the middle of the plate either. So Lane's going to have to find something in his arsenal. Canyon Pace giving him the call from home plate. Evans takes the first pitch that's given to him, and here's a delivery. It's going to be off the hands back into the netting, staying alive as Dijon. Dijon continues to battle here with a full count. Evans forced to throw a strike on every pitch. The control has been there during this plate appearance at least, walking the last one, and that's going to be off the bat. Just a little dribbler to the third base dugout foul. And Dijon continues to stay in this at bat. Evans taking a little bit of heat off of it to make sure that his control is there. Some discipline here by the sophomore right-hander to stay in this at bat. His fastball is taking a few miles per hour off of it to make sure that it's in the zone. And here's the pitch. It's going to be swung on. Kenya Pace is going to grab it and tag out the runner, Dejon. There's going to be a conversation. He asks that it was a hit by pitch. He goes to his first base coach, but that's going to do it as the Bulldogs vacate the field, leaving the bases loaded is Lane Evans, who is able to pitch out of a jam. And arguing there at the plate is the third baseman, Dejon, refusing to go back to the dugout. The coach is going to grab him with his right hand, escort him back home. And the Bulldogs escape with no runs given up. The bases are loaded on three walks. And yet, they're just stranded all the same. Bulldogs still up by four to the bottom of the fifth inning we go. A good job done there by the Bulldog bullpen. Whatever they went through, they went through together. Welcome, guys. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. Dynamics Physical Therapy, your elite provider in sports medicine and performance. Now serving communities throughout West Tennessee. Mitch Sisk will get his third plate appearance of the game as the Tigers tap out for some more relief assistance here for the second time in this one. Sisk will hit that right back into the netting, and the Tigers will pull Keaton out of the game. He went three and two-thirds innings after coming in in the top or in the bottom of the first. He threw 45 pitches, giving up three hits, two runs, one walk, and struck out two in the 15 batters he faced. As we go to Roe Ketchum in relief. Catch him so far this season as a 1.93 ERA, the junior out of West Point, Mississippi. Went to West Point High School for Idawamba Community College for transferring into West Alabama. Last season he had a 10.24 ERA with three losses and no wins and he started to get his control under shape. It appears in the two appearances that he's had he's gone four and two-thirds innings, given up five hits, four strikeouts, given up three doubles in the 19 batters that he has faced. His last appearance was on Valentine's Day earlier this week against Montevallo. He went two-thirds of an innings, gave up two hits, and that one is going to be a swing and a miss there by Mitch Sisk. Big game so far this season by Ketchum. Came on February 2nd where he threw four innings, giving up one hit, one run, struck out four. And that appearance he has no record so far in this season. Here's a delivery to Sisk up and away and that's going to take a count here full against Mitch Sisk. So 
Three balls, two strikes here to the Bulldog third baseman. Sisk reached with a double in the second inning. Struck out swinging in the first. It was left stranded out there at second. That's going to be just a little blooper over the head of the first baseman. It's going to land in fair territory. Rounding first is going to be Mitch Sisk, and they thought it was going to be foul. Sisk might have had a walk on that one, but he's going to get on with a little blue pit right over the head of Horton. Horton was floating back out there towards right field in shallow grass, and he wasn't really running for it. Had he run probably two feet farther, he would have had that ball. But he just casually strolled out there to right field, just like that, Mitch Sisk is on with a leadoff single, and the cleanup hitter, Alec Hardy, is up to the plate. Hardy had a double in the bottom of the first inning. That scored Carson Chavies before grounding out to Dejan, the third baseman, in the second. He's got a runner on, and Mitch Sisk, and going home, it's going to be the pitcher, Ketchum. It's a chilly one up here in the press booth today. The wind coming Sneaking through the windows for our crowd microphone. Big thank you to Worthy Road Studios for helping us out today on the broadcast, running our cameras and our production. Thankful to have them this season. And Alec Hardy's going to put it into play. Newman, the shortstop, takes it to second over to first base. He's not going to get the second one, but he will get the first. And so Hardy will reach on a fielder's choice. Sisk is eliminated from the base path. What was almost a 6-4-3 double play is unable to happen as Alec Hardy legs it out, makes his way over to first, and it's going to bring up Grant Ross, the sophomore first baseman. 15, Grant Gross, who leads the team in RBIs this season, has an opportunity for his 12th. He walked and was left stranded in the first, struck out looking in the third on that questionable call that he ran to the third base dugout in clear frustration. Ross will take the first one out for a ball. Dejan, the third baseman, playing in for a possible move him over bunt or a little dribbler down the third baseline. Ross will take a check swing, unable to pull that. It's going to be ball two here to the first baseman. Ross so far this season hitting 385 for the Bulldogs. He's had 41 at-bats, 15 hits, one double. He recorded his fourth walk of the season in the first inning. And here's a delivery to him. Swing right through it. They're going to say he got a little piece of it into the glove of the catcher Fletcher. So two balls, one strike, one out here to Ross. He'll load up. Pickoff attempt there by Ketchum. Trying to hold Hardy close. He reached on the fielder's choice. Take a moment, a little pause here. Everybody resets. Ross will take a couple windmills with the bat. Big swing arounds. Get back in the box from the stretch. The lefty Ketchum looks over, checks the runner. Hardy at first, and he's going home with it. Ross up on the shoulders. Hardy's going to try to go for it, and the throw is going to be off the mark. Umpire doesn't even say safe or out. He just stands there and will make his way over to third, which will tell us that Alec Hardy has stolen a base. A good throw there by Fletcher. Kitterman had to slide a little bit to get it at second base. But had he made the tag in the base path, he could have tagged him out before Hardy was even close to the bag. Good base running there by the Bulldog designated hitter to slide in and around. And the runner in scoring position here for Grant Ross with one out. Shortstop Newman trying to bait a pickoff attempt. And they're going to call that a strike against Grant Ross. He didn't totally agree, but thankfully he's got an extra buffer one as the count goes full here to the first baseman. So three balls, two strikes, one out. All the pressure on Ketchum to throw a strike here. Ross having to defend it anything close. He learned his lesson in the third inning where he was rung up, and he's going to dribble that one towards the first base dugout foul. Vogler, the center fielder, has shifted over about 10 feet to his left. Moves into right field territory. Of course, the wind 
Heading out there at about 8 miles an hour, 14 mile an hour gusts. Hasn't been a huge factor. We've seen one or two balls travel a little bit differently, mostly on a pop fly. And here's a delivery. Ross, swing and a miss. It's going to be a drop third strike. Going over to first will be Fletcher, and he records it as Grant Ross strike out for the second time in the game. As you got a fight for your right to party rings out here. Over to loudspeakers at Fezmeyer Field. That means that Canyon Pace is coming up to bat. He flew out to left field in the first inning. He struck out swinging in the third. And it's really been the middle of the lineup that hasn't been able to get a whole lot done so far. Everybody at the top of the lineup has been cleaning house for the Bulldogs. Smith has scored twice. Chavis has scored. And then we get down to the bottom. Dylan Barrett in the eight hole has had a good game offensively. And we're going to have a conversation at the mat. We'll be right back with you here in a few brief moments. You trade in your car. You trade in your house. So why not get some equity back from your old HVAC system? McCoy's Heating and Air will now give you up to $2,000 trade-in for your old unit, plus a free 10-year parts and labor warranty with the purchase of a qualifying York system. That's right. Trade in your old unit and get up to $2,000, plus a free 10-year parts and labor warranty. For a limited time, only from McCoy's Heating and Air. comes out, has a conversation with Ketchum. They're going to leave him in. Now one guy stretching out in the right field bullpen for the Tigers. And they came up with a strategy of how they're going to play against Canyon Pace, the catcher for the Bulldogs, as he just dribbles that one right off of the end of the bat, about two feet in front of home plate, but they're going to say it's a foul ball. Fletcher, who took off the mask, now recalibrate, take a step out briefly. Ketchum. Now from the stretch, we'll look back. He's got Alec Hardy, who reached on the fielder's choice. A board down there at second base in scoring position. Kittleman getting close there, and here's a delivery. It's going to be a swing and a miss there by Canyon Pace as he goes right through that one. No balls, two strikes, two outs here to the Bulldog catcher. And Alec Hardy will take a three, four-foot approach there at second, just leading off. Carefully, Horton protecting at first and a real big gap there on the right side of the field. If Kenyon Pace is able to get something on the ground at the end of the bat, he's got a big gap to poke something out towards right field. And here's a delivery to him. It's up and away and good discipline there by Kenyon Pace to hold off on that one. One ball, two strikes, two outs here. Kenyon Pace, sophomore hitting 250 so far. He's 7 for 28 in the season. Flew out to left in the first inning. He struck out swinging in the third inning. Unable to reach in this game. Here's a delivery for him. A swing and a miss, and he goes down on strikes. And that's going to be the second strikeout of the inning here. Canyon Pace goes down swinging, and the Bulldogs unable to get anything done. To the top of the sixth inning we go. We're just past halfway. We'll be right back with you here for some more Bulldogs. Dynamics Physical Therapy, your elite provider in sports medicine and performance. Now serving communities throughout West Tennessee. 
the award-winning Ball Game Blitz Sports Network from Worthy Road Studios. Over 750,000 views in 2023. We're where you need to advertise. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and join over 4,500 subscribers watching local sports. The Jackson Rockabillies, Union University, Methyl, USJ, TCA, Jackson Christian, Sacred Heart, and Peabody. Multi-camera broadcasts, slow motion instant replay, on-screen scoreboard and graphics, and professional announcers. Thanks to our sponsors who make it all possible. The Ball Game Blitz Sports Network from Worthy Road Studios. The premier sports broadcast network in West Tennessee. Lane Evans will get the ball for his second inning, and he's going to start it off against Vineyard. Flies out all the way towards right field. Carson Shavies underneath it in right. One pitch, one out is all we need to get rid of Vineyard. So Evans came on in relief of Tony. He inherited two runners. He walked the first one that he faced. He was able to strike out Dejan to get out of the jam in the top of the fifth. That's the most the Tigers have threatened so far in this game. Bulldog pitching staff has had a clean slate, given up no runs, three hits, no errors. It's Fletcher, the catcher, will come up to the plate. Here's the pitch from Evans. It's going to be outside, framing it as Canyon Pace trying to get a good look at that. So Lane Evans back on the mound. You have no hits, thrown 15 pitches in this game. He walked one, struck out one in the three batters that he faced. It's going to be his delivery to Fletcher, who just pops it right out towards left field, running over his Ramsey, unable to get it on time. He'll take a two-hopper and a board for the first runner of this inning. With a single will be Fletcher. Get things started here for the Tigers in the top of the sixth inning. Thibodeau up to the plate. Thibodeau singled, was left stranded in the second inning. He struck out looking in the fourth inning. Evans have a little bit of a modified stretch there, kind of a quick wind up from the right side. Over at first base is Fletcher, reached with the single. So a little bit of a problem over there for Evans that he's going to have to deal with. Quiet bullpens on both the left and the right field side of the field, and a good placement there by Evans, who's begun to figure out his control. He came in, walked the first batter that he faced. That was Kitterman, last inning. But ever since he walked him, he's had some great command so far. We'll see if he can continue that. As he faces Thibodeau, he throws it up and out. Thibodeau so far this season, now DHing in his junior year. He's hitting 130 coming into this game. He's had three hits and 23 plate appearances. Got his fourth hit earlier of the season in the second base, and here's a delivery to him. A big swing and a miss there by the DH for the Tigers. So two balls, two strikes, one out. You look over, and the women's softball team is just taking the lead in the bottom of the sixth inning. They're up two to one. Lady Bulldogs are two runs on seven hits, no errors. Lady Tigers, one hit, or one run on four hits, no errors. They broke the 1 1 spell that they've been locked into, and Thibodeau goes down on strikes. The second out of the inning here, recorded by Lane Evans. And the Bulldog ladies having a late game rally here. You can probably hear through our microphone the cheering going on behind us at the softball game. Cade Horton, the first baseman, came in this game hitting 400. He'll get the plate appearance here, and here's a delivery to him outside. A good grab there by Canyon Pace. And a big rally here by the softball ladies. They were locked a 1-1 game all the way through the sixth. Of course, each of those softball games only seven innings. They have a doubleheader today. The rain modified our schedule a little bit. The plan was to have a single game on Friday for baseball, a doubleheader on Saturday. And so yesterday, we knew that as the rain started to go away from the Friday weather cell that passed through Jackson, Middle Tennessee, they pushed this game to a Sunday afternoon game. They recorded the doubleheader yesterday. West Alabama won that first game of the doubleheader yesterday, 10-9. They were up 9-1 to one in the fourth inning before the Bulldogs put six on the board in the bottom of the fourth. 
But sneaking their way back in were the Tigers in the eighth inning. They put an extra run up on the board. That ended up being the winning run of that game. But the Bulldogs really pitched a gem in the second game. Both pitchers went the full distance yesterday in game two. Eli Snelson threw seven innings. Maxwell Schumacher threw six. And the Bulldogs were able to walk away with a victory. A 2-1 game. Highlighted by some small ball batting. That was in there for strike two. The count goes full here against Horton. He was getting ready to take the strap off of his left cleat. Ready to walk, make his way over to first base on the walk. And instead, he's got a three ball, two strike, two out situation. The runner's going to be going. That's Fletcher over at first. Horton thought he had a walk. And he's got a foul ball over the first base side as the count remains full as he hits it back to the field house here on the campus of Union University. So after that foul ball, dial back in. Three balls, two strikes, count is full. Umpire in the field is going to call timeout to allow Fletcher to tie his shoe over at first base. So we'll take a brief moment pause here. Everybody kind of catches their breath. And now right back to the... Big game situation. Three balls, two strikes. It's out towards center field. Matthew Autry dropping back two feet, then charging over to his left. He's underneath it, and he hauls it in in center field for the third out of the inning. Lane Evans able to go with only four batters here in the top of the sixth. The bottom of the inning we go. The Tigers strand one. It's Fletcher, and we will be right back with you. Bulldogs up by four. Whatever they went through, they went through together. Welcome, guys. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. When you hear our name, know that it comes with a promise to give back to the community that built us. A promise to provide a human touch in a world that is becoming more automated. Ever since we put our roots down in Jackson in 1996, we have aspired to be community focused by supporting programs and organizations that are important to our city. At First Bank, it is our mission to be present in our community and to continue the belief that when you bank local, you get more. Member FDIC. in the bottom of the sixth inning. Ketchum will remain in on the mound. Elijah Ramsey will be leading things off here in the bottom of the sixth for the Bulldogs. Right behind us, the Tigers have tied it up in the top of the seventh inning in the softball game. They were down to some of their final outs, and they made it a 2-2 game. They're in the bottom of the seventh right behind us with the Bulldogs. Lady softball team having an opportunity to walk it off once again. First ball's in there for a called strike on Elijah Ramsey real close to the zone. Ramsey not sure about the call, disagreed with it, but uh, you watch the first one in there for a strike. Playing shallow is Dejan, the third baseman. That one's going to be outside for a strike two. That one looked way out on the zone. Ramsey now knows what the strike zone is. He's going to have to adjust to it. Both of those pitches looking like they were way outside and setting up a mile out of the zone is Fletcher. And he's going to throw probably the same pitch again he does, and that's going to be strike three. First two pitches right outside, so if you're Ramsey, you got to swing at anything that's across your body and not near the zone, and that's what he did. And he goes down swinging, so strike out to Ramsey will bring up Dylan Barrett, the shortstop. He's got a pair of singles so far in the, game, the day. He's had a hot bat so far, singled in the second inning, came around to score. That's going to be called strike one on him. He singled in the fourth inning as well, but was left stranded at third base on the ground out by Carson Chavies. The bottom of four. Delivery to him, and he's going to get this one blooped out towards right field. Grabbing it is going to be Vineyard. He comes down on a knee to grab it out in right field, and Barrett goes down on a pop fly. Almost got another one, but a good play there by Vineyard. 
Gets a quick two outs on the board. So Ramsey goes down, Barrett goes down, and it's going to be Matthew Autry. This is the first plate appearance that Matthew Autry has not had a runner on for him. He's had Barrett on both times. He dropped a bunt both times to do move him over plays, and we'll see now what he's got in the saddle. He's going to throw that right under the glove of the third baseman. Dejon Newman's going to field it, bobble it at shortstop, and Matthew Autry's going to be on. They will probably credit that to him as a single, a good play there by Autry. Charging in was Dejon and Horton. You wonder if the third baseman had been just a little bit more deep in that infield dirt had he had a play on that as it snuck right under his glove, Newman having to catch him up. And they're going to say that Autry reaches with a single on the official scoring sheet here up in the press booth. And to the top of the lineup we go with two outs. Will the Bulldogs be able to rally? Their man is Will Allen Smith. He tripled to lead things off in the top of the first inning and in a small pickoff attempt there by Ketchum. Will on Smith tripled on the very first at-bat of the game. He came around to score on the single by Carson Chavies, and then he walked, came around to score in the second inning before hitting a pop fly, and here's a delivery to Will on Smith. It's going to be back to first base, and they're going to say he threw him out over at first base. Fletcher makes a throw over, and Matthew Autry gets just lit up down there. A good tag there by Horton. A beautiful throw there by the catcher. It cleans up the base paths and cleans up the inning. To the top of the seventh inning we go. Are you looking for a Christian college or starting the college search process? I want to take a second to tell you about my school, Union University in Jackson, Tennessee. Union is a private four-year university known for its rigorous academics, Christ-centered community, and the success of its graduates. My favorite part about Union is the faculty. The professors here are so intentional about helping students grow not only academically, but also spiritually. You should check out Union for yourself. Come for a visit. I know you'll love it. At Union University, you'll be transformed. Pitch from Lane Evans in there to Will Wood is a called strike. Right behind us, the Lady Bulldogs just walked it off. The softball getting their second walk-off in just as many days. They walked it off last night against the Tigers, and they do the exact same thing here in the bottom of the seventh. Right behind us, you could probably hear the screams and cheers of Bulldog fans raining out here at Fezmeyer Field Complex in this game. So Lane Evans now face Wood again. That's going to be hit right back to him over the glove of Evans grabbing it as the second baseman, Will Allen Smith. He's got to make a really tough throw, and he's not going to get there in time. And Wood is able to reach for the second time in this game. He reached on a walk in the fifth inning, and he does just as much here in the seventh. So Wood now at first to the top of the lineup we go for the Tigers. It's going to be Bryce Newman at the plate in his fourth plate appearance. He flew out to left field in the first inning. In the third inning, he singled and was left stranded at second. And in the fifth inning, he flew out to center field. Here's a delivery from Evans. It's going to be outside. Canyon Pace able to protect from a move him over situation. Lady Bulldogs softball team will reset the field. They'll be back with you in about 45 minutes probably for the second game of their doubleheader as we move to the final third of this game here for the men. Lane Evans with a great pickup attempt, unable to get the out. Grant Ross applying a good tag there to Wood. Mitch Sisk, the third baseman, playing relatively shallow 
Will Allen Smith and Dylan Barrett both playing close to the bag, looking for a possible roll em up situation. Double play. Lane Evans trying to keep stuff down in the zone, forcing the batter to hit it low. That's going to be a called strike there against Newman. Newman, the junior, leadoff hitter with a 344 average entering today. He got his 12th hit of the season. He now is tied for the lead with Dijon for the most hits by any Tiger in this offense and a called strike there to Newman. So Evans waiting for time to be received by the umpire. Take a moment. And here we go. One ball, two strikes here from the sophomore. It's going to be in the dirt. Kenya Pace is going to grab it. Throw not going to be made. And sliding in the second base will be Wood on what most likely is going to be a wild pitch in the dirt. Kenyon Pace almost had a situation to throw him down in that force out. Roll him up double play is no longer an option here for the Bulldog middle infielders. As Newman has a little bit less pressure. He can hit it wherever he needs to hit it. So two balls, two strikes, no outs. Newman the batter, Evans the pitcher. Evans from the stretch, looks back. Will Allen Smith holding it second, and that's going to be out towards the right field. Going over to the wall is Chavies, and it's going to land right outside of the reach of the right field bullpen for West Alabama. Good crowd on hand here for the Bulldogs today. Union fans getting a lot of action this weekend. Of course, the basketball games yesterday, men and women both won at home. The baseball doubleheader, the softball single game action going into extra innings. And that's going to be hit right over the head of Lane Evans out towards center field. Almost takes his face off. Matthew Autry hauls it in. Going to stay at third will be Wood. And it's going to set up a first and third situation with no outs. And really threatening here for the first time in this game. West Alabama's got two runners on. Wood now moves over to third base. Newman now at first on the single. He hit a hot shot rocket right back at Evans. Glad that that didn't get a piece of him. Evans looks over to his dugout. There's now action warming up in the left field bullpen. And Ogler, center fielder, now have a chance to be the man of the hour. Tying run on deck. Umpire's going to call time here at the plate, and Vogler now gets his fourth plate appearance. Vogler popped out to the catcher, Canyon Pace, in the first inning. In the third inning, he had a pop fly. Foul territory caught by the second baseman, Will Allen Smith, and he walked and was left stranded in the fifth inning. Pace gives his middle infielders what the call is in the situation that Newman tries to steal. Second base, he's currently 0 for 1 on the season on a steal. Moved over in the third. Now, Lane Evans has himself a pressure situation that he's got to get out of. No balls, one strike, the count to Vogler. Infield prepared for a throw down by Newman. Trying to steal, and he does not. That ball just slips away once again here. One ball, one strike, no outs. Evans loading up. Here's a play. A swing and a miss there by Newman. will take the count to one ball and two strikes. Infield will take a few steps back. No longer worrying about to bunt. Trying to steal home or move him over. Everybody back to their regular position. This can be fouled back into the netting here by the center fielder, Vogler. The wind really starting to pick up. Some big gusts here at the Fez. Wood at third. Newman at first. Vogler at the plate. One ball, two strikes, no outs. Bulldogs up by four on eight hits. Here's a delivery. It's going to get away from the catcher, Canyon Pace. Into the backstop, one run will come home to score. The Tigers put their first on. Going to third base is going to be Newman, and they're going to say that he is safe over there at third, and a wild pitch by Lane Evans will bring Wood home. Newman almost got thrown out there by Canyon Pace, who quickly recovered, grabbed the ball, and made a good throw as Newman went sliding off of the bag. Mitch Sisk tried to apply the tag, but crawling back into some help was Newman and Vogler. Now, 
One run is scored during this plate appearance. Now 90 feet away is another. And that's going to be upstairs here by Lane Evans. Two balls, two strikes. We'll see what Evans has cooked up here. It's going to be straight up once again. He's hit th three pop flies now. Underneath it is going to be Will Allen Smith, and it looks like it was caught there by Dylan Barrett. It literally bounced off of the glove. It looked like it, looked like it bounced off the glove of Smith, but possibly also of Barrett, and grabbing it with his bare hand is the Bulldog shortstop. A great defensive play. They were lost in the light, and they were standing in the one spot on the field that there is shade. And a wild play there in the middle infield is going to put down Vogler and give the Bulldogs their first out of the inning. Houston Kitterman will now have an opportunity with a runner in scoring position. At third remains Newman. Infield back to their normal spots. Kitterman with a 333 average. Singled in the first inning. He walked and was left stranded at first in the fifth. He's been stranded at first both times aboard today. He hit a pop fly out to shallow center field in the third inning. Matthew Autry retired him then. And here's a delivery from Evans to him. Looked like a really good pitch. If that was against a left-handed batter, there's a pretty good chance that that's a strike. It looks very similar to the pitch received by Eli Ramsey in the bottom of the sixth inning. But here in this situation, it's going to be a ball, too. So two balls, no strikes, one out. Here to Kitterman. Evans looks over, checks the runner at third, and that's going to be in the dirt once again as the command is beginning to struggle here by the younger Evans. So action out there in the left field bullpen. Looks like Ethan Orwig warming up in the bullpen for the Bulldogs. No action out in right field. Tigers feel good about their bullpen. A great pitch there by Evans when the time was needed. Three balls, one strike, no green light. Take a pause here. Everybody kind of resets. We see Barrett and Smith go back to their main position, and that's going to be popped up on the right side. Running over will be the first baseman, Grant Ross, right in front of the dugout, and he's going to lose it in the sun. It gets just away from him and unable to get the pop fly. A big moment here and a break given to Houston Kitterman. What should have been an out by Grant Ross falls about two feet right behind his glove. Right in front of the dugout, we wonder if they were chirping there at Grant Ross, distracting him. And Kitterman escapes with a second life. Down to his final strike. Three balls, two strikes. The count is full, one out. Lane Evans going home with it. It's going to be popped right back up towards the press booth. It's going to hit the ceiling here. Roll back down. It's going to be up on the roof here of the press box. So three balls, two strikes, one out. Here is the delivery once again with full count. He's going to take it low on the knees, and that's going to be ball four. So Casey now telling his outfielders to split a little bit. Matthew Autry, the center fielder, signaling behind his head. The defense is now going to move back as they see Chase Dijon have another big plate appearance here. And that's going to be a dribbler down the third baseline foul. Last time we saw Dijon, he had the bases loaded. This time he's got two on, and he struck out in the last one. A big play where he sat and argued. The coaches had to come and take him back to the first base dugout. We'll see what they do here. As there's a conversation between Dijon and one of the coaching staff here for West Alabama. So they call time, they go and they give Dijon what he needs to face Lane Evans here in a first and third situation. Kitterman at first, Newman at third base. Tying run now symbolized here at home plate in Dijon. We'll see if he succumbs to the pressure again or if he is able to break through the struggle that he had in his last plate appearance. 
So far in this game, he struck out swing in the first inning, struck out swing in the fifth inning, and hit a line drive out to first base there in the third. One ball, one strike, one out, two runners on. Here's a delivery. It's going to be hit down the third base, a little dribbler to the dugout. <laughs> One of the contributing coaches here for the Bulldogs, unable to haul it in over there on the dugout. One ball, two strikes. Evans one strike away from getting him again. He struck out twice. Can he make it three? A pickoff attempt there by Lane Evans. A good catch by Grant Ross applying the tag to Kitterman, who slides underneath it safe. Evans looking for a strike or possibly something on the ground. Middle infield Smith and Barrett on the edge of their seats waiting for the pitch. Canyon Pace trying to frame that one a foot outside the box. That ain't going to work. So now Evans will have the opportunity one more time. Two balls, two strikes, one out here to Dijon. And it's going to be strike three. They're going to throw it down. There's going to be a play, and it's going to be a strikeout. Throw them out. Double play here. And a miscommunication by the base runners for the Tigers ends in a Bulldog double play. And Lane Evans escapes the jam. Once again, Dijon strikes out when he's supposed to come up clutch for the third time today. And the Bulldogs get two outs. They give up one run. Coming home to score was Wood. It's a three-run ball game. We'll be right back with you. It's time to stretch here at Fesmeyer Field. To the bottom of the seventh we go. Bulldogs up by three. Your life. Your home. Your business. Your future. Focusing on you, West Tennessee Bank strives to serve its clients in every season of life. With vast experience in personal and business banking, we take pride in guiding you through significant events. At West Tennessee Bank, we help you realize your dreams. West Tennessee Bank is a division of Decatur County Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. West Tennessee Bank, focused on you. You trade in your car. You trade in your house. So why not get some equity back from your old HVAC system? McCoy's Heating and Air will now give you up to $2,000 trade-in for your old unit plus a free 10-year parts and labor warranty with the purchase of a qualifying York system. That's right. Trade in your old unit and get up to $2,000, plus a free 10-year parts and labor warranty. For a limited time, only from McCoy's Heating and Air. Here we go, back to the top of the Bulldog lineup. It's Will Allen Smith who will be leading things off here for the Bulldogs after Matthew Autry was picked off in the bottom of the sixth inning. So Allen gets a new chance here at his plate appearance. Ketchum remains on, and the Bulldogs look to crack him for the first time in this game. He's thrown two innings so far, giving up zero runs, two hits, 26 pitches. The Bulldogs quickly... Popped off in the early stages of this game. They scored two in the bottom of the first, two in the bottom of the second, and have been held silent since then as Will Allen Smith swings at something way out of the zone and is left with nothing but a little whiff cream. So that's going to be the first out of the inning, bringing up Carson Chavis, who gets his attempt here at catcher. Number 19, so Holland started this game off as a starter for West Alabama. He went one-third of an inning through 21 pitches. He had three hits, two runs. Keaton filled in the brunt work of it with three and two-thirds innings on 45 pitches, gave up another two runs. But the Bulldog batters have been held pretty silent aside from a single by Barrett in the fourth inning. That's about all they've been able to muster up here in the mid-innings of this game. They've been a... 7th, 8th, ninth inning team. So we'll see if they can get something going here just as the Tigers are starting to heat up. They scored one run in the top of the 7th. That was Wood. They reached on bases loaded in the 5th inning. They just continue to be a constant threat here for the Bulldogs who look to slam the door on this comeback possibility. As that gets in on Chavis, almost hits him in the arm. 
Jamal Allen warming up, playing some catch on the third base, behind the third base dugout. We'll see if they bring him into the game. Here's a delivery. Chavis right back into the netting. Two balls, two strikes. Carson in the first inning had a single, came around to score on the double by Alec Hardy. He hit an RBI ground out in the second inning. He grounded out in the fourth inning. He's made contact all three times. We'll see what he does here. Two balls, two strikes, one out to Chavis. And he's going to get contact again, foul that one back. He's continuing to stay alive, battle every pitch. He's had a really good read so far this season. Entered today's game, 417 batting average, 15 hits, led the team. He took strong command of the hit total leader for the Bulldogs earlier today with that single in the first. An infield back, here's the pitch to Carson. He's going to put it right down the third baseline foul. Dijon just out of room there. About three feet more needed to the right. And Chavis would have had himself a double. So two balls, two strikes. Once again, Chavis continuing to foul off three or four pitches in a row here. Here's a delivery. Way outside and up. So the count goes full here to Carson. And it's going to force Roe Ketchum to put something down the middle of the plate. Ketchum now facing his eight, ninth batter of the game. He struck out four of the eight so far. So three balls, two strikes. Carson's going to fight for anything close, and he's going to dribble that one to third base. That's something that we never see Chavis do is just let one sneak past him. He's going to go down swinging, rather put something in play. And it's got to be way outside, especially in a full count situation for him to take ball four. So if I'm catching him, I'm going to bury something down and away because if Worst comes to worst, at least it's on the ground towards my right side fielders. And a swing and a miss. Looked like he almost got a piece of it. And Chavis goes down swinging on a real big whiff down and away. Could have called that one from a mile away. And back-to-back -back swinging strikeouts here leads off the bottom of the seventh as Mitch Sisk has an opportunity to face catch him. Sisk has had a big game so far already. He had a single in the fifth, but was eliminated from the base path after a fielder's choice by Alec Hardy, and he shows Bunt unable to lay it down. Looking to get on with a, his speed. He doubled and was left stranded in the second after striking out swinging in the first. Ketchum's going to want a different ball. He's going to sub that one out, give it over to the third base dugout, get a fresh, clean piece of leather there. So catch him now with a brand new baseball going from the stretch still. Modifying a little bit of the kick from his windup and he's going to go to the plate and Sisk is going to put it right in the gap out towards center field. Mitch is on with a single grabbing it will be Vogler getting it back into the infield and Mitch Sisk able to get things going here. In the seventh inning, a good read on the ball finds the one gap on the infield, bringing up the cleanup hitter, Alec Hardy. Hardy's had a good day at the plate so far. He had a fielder's choice in the fifth inning where he stole a base before being left stranded at second, and he had the double, scored a couple RBIs in the top of or in the bottom of the first inning all the way back about an hour and a half ago, actually two and a half hours ago. A big swing and a miss there by Alec. Bottom of the seventh, Bulldogs, three-run lead. We'll see if they remain with Lane Evans on the mound or if they'll go to one of their set-up men for closer. So Sisk is leading off at first, Hardy at the plate. Here's a delivery. Alec Hardy will take that for a called strike. Down low, no balls, two on him. Grant Ross on deck. Had the... One, two, three, now four hitters up this inning. And here's the cleanup man with two strikes on him. And he's going to foul that one off, fight way outside the zone, throwing down his helmet as Fletcher in frustration. Not sure what that was about. Good pitch placement there by Ketchum. Hardy stays alive another day. 
Entered this game with a 229 batting average. Junior out of Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College, transferred here last year, made his immediate impact, getting the starting spot, usually at second base, and he's in the DH role as he puts a little blooper out towards shallow left center field, and it's going to land. Newman unable to get it. Mitch Sisk is going to make his way over to third, and the Bulldogs set up a first and third on a single by Alec Hardy right in the gap over the head of the shortstop, and a beautiful placement there on a bloop single. Out to left center field. So Sisk now makes his way over to third. Alec Hardy now at first. We have back-to-back -back singles with Grant Ross, the sophomore first baseman. Taking his crack at it here. Ross unable to come up with anything so far in this game. He struck out swinging in the fifth, looking in the third. And that might look like we're going to have a meeting at the mound. We'll be right back with you here. Bulldogs looking to threaten to add a few runs of insurance. Award-winning Ball Game Blitz Sports Network from Worthy Road Studios. Over 750,000 views in 2023. We're where you need to advertise. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and join over 4,500 subscribers watching local sports. The Jackson Rockabillies, Union University, Bethel, USJ, TCA, Jackson Christian, Sacred Heart, and Peabody. Multi-camera broadcasts, slow motion instant replay, on-screen scoreboard and graphics, and professional announcers. Thanks to our sponsors who make it all possible. The Ball Game Blitz Sports Network from Worthy Road Studios. The premier sports broadcast network in West Tennessee. Pitching really showing up here in this conference matchup, Gulf South Conference matchup against the University of West Alabama. Leading off here in the top of the eighth inning is going to be Blake Vineyard, who ended the bottom of the seventh, uh, seventh inning two out rally as he caught the fly ball out in the right field to escape any more damage. And that's going to be hit right back to Lane Evans. He's going to bobble it. He's going to grab it, throw it over to first base. It recovers well and gets the ground out. A 1-3 ground out will escape the jam here. This vineyard is eliminated. Lane Evans. Happy to see that his offense was able to produce some runs behind him. He's gone two and two-thirds innings after Noah Tony went four and two-thirds innings. A great appearance there by both pitchers. Evans has given up one run on three hits, two walks, struck out three, faced now 12 batters. There's a couple guys warming up in the Bulldog bullpen. But now that they've got those runs of insurance, they're able to let Lane Evans get a few more innings under his belt. And here's the delivery. Great off-speed curve in there. Looked like it was a great pitch. Just not getting the call there will be Fletcher. Ryan Fletcher, the catcher, so far in this game, grounded out in the second inning. He flew out to center field in the fourth inning and singled but was left stranded as he takes that one right in the middle of the back. And he'll take his way over to first base on the hit-by-pitch by Lane Evans. That's the first hit batter given up by the Bulldogs today. Something that they have struggled with time and time again in previous seasons, but have really gotten under control this year. That's been one of the big moments is their ability to use the small ball play on offense, but really trying to minimize the walks and hit by pitch, self-inflicted wounds on their pitching staff. Just keep the ball in play, trust your defense. A relatively youthful team for the Bulldogs. There's only one senior in this lineup, and that's Mitch Sisk. Most of the team is actually a freshman or a sophomore. Alicardi and Carson Chavies, the two juniors, both have an extra year of eligibility. Alicardi transferred in. Carson Chavies has spent his entire collegiate career with the Bulldogs. It's exciting to see him come back for a third season. Coach Casey now 
getting to see the benefits of the first class that he recruited to Union. Nick Thibodeau at the plate with a one ball, two strike count. Thibodeau singled, is left stranded at second in the second inning. Struck out looking in the fourth and swinging in the sixth. That ball's going to be just out of reach. Hauled in there by the catcher, Canyon Pace. So two balls, two strikes, one out. Need something on the ground here. Roll it up, see if the Bulldogs are able to get out of it. Had one double play already in this game. Got him out of the last inning. Here's delivery. Just low and outside. The count's going to go full. Game two of the softball game getting started behind us here. The Lady Bulldogs walked it off in the bottom of the seventh earlier, about an hour ago. Here's the full count delivery from Evans. It's going to be out towards right field. Chavis dropping back towards the warning track. He's going to be underneath it with room to spare. He hauls it in. Heading back to first will be Fletcher, and Thibodeau flies out for the second out of the inning. A good catch made by Carson Chavis with about two feet left before he hit the warning track. Cade Horton, the first baseman, entered today with a 400 batting average, was going eight for 20. Added a walk and two flyouts so far to his career today. He walked in the second inning, was left stranded. And he flew out to left field and center field, respectively, in the fifth and sixth innings. Been a couple innings since we've seen him, and he has an opportunity here in the top of the eighth to get something going. He's got a runner on first base. That's Fletcher. He reached on the hit by pitch. Surrendered by Evans, and here's a delivery. One ball turns into two. Two balls, no strikes, two outs. Working his way back in from the stretch. That's going to be just inside on the hands. No green light expected here. We'll see if they ask for the four-pitch walk. Evans looks over to his third base dugout for a call. And here's the delivery. Right down the middle of the pipe. Three balls, one strike, two outs. Fletcher leading off. First base, Grant Ross holding him. No pickoff attempts as of late from Lane Evans. He did it a couple times in previous innings, but he waited here, and that's going to be ball four. So two free bases given up here by the Bulldogs. Relief pitcher Lane Evans. Horton now makes his way over to first. Fletcher his way to second base after he was hit by a pitch. Now we go to the nine hole as it looks like we may go to the bullpen as well. But we'll be right back with you after this meeting at the mound. Coach Casey, coming out. Whatever they went through, they went through together. Welcome, guys. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. When you hear our name, know that it comes with a promise to give back to the community that built us. A promise to provide a human touch in a world that is becoming more automated. Ever since we put our roots down in Jackson in 1996, we have aspired to be community focused by supporting programs and organizations that are important to our city. At First Bank, it is our mission to be present in our community and to continue the belief that when you bank local, you get more. Member FDIC. Makes his way to the batter's box. We're going to go to the bullpen for the third time. Actually, second time today. Third pitcher for the Bulldogs in this game. Lane Evans exits the game after throwing three innings, 72 pitches, giving up three hits, one run, three walks, 
three strikeouts in the 15 batters he faced as we give it to Ethan Orwig. Evans having a very articulate throw right down the middle. Orwig could not be any different. So as Wood makes his way to the box, he takes his first one in there for a ball. He singled and scored in the seventh inning. He represents the only run scored by West Alabama today. He walked to his left strand in the third. And Ethan Orwig will now have an opportunity to get the one out that the Bulldogs need to get out of this jam. He's pitched in only four games so far this season. Two against Washburn, one at Young Harris, and one here at home against Lane College. He's got an ERA so far this season of 12, and that's going to be hit off of the, looks like it was off of the helmet there of the Kedrick Canyon pay. He's got 12 ERA. His freshman season it was at 4.7, last year at 7.4, and this year up to 12. But he does have one win so far this season. He appeared in 22 games last year. He's thrown only three innings of work this year, giving up four hits on five runs. And that's going to ring him up, and that's going to be strike three there. He paints the outside corner. Ethan Orwig comes, gets the big strike he needs. Wood goes down swinging, and the Bulldogs have one more opportunity to add some insurance in the bottom of the eighth inning. Bulldogs up by five. Orwig slams the door. Here we go. Eighth inning. We'll be right back with you at the Fesmeyer Field. Whatever they went through, they went through together. Welcome, guys. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. You trade in your car. You trade in your house. So why not get some equity back from your old HVAC system? McCoy's Heating and Air will now give you up to $2,000 trade-in for your old unit. Plus a free 10-year parts and labor warranty with the purchase of a qualifying York system. That's right. Trade in your old unit and get up to $2,000 plus a free 10-year parts and labor warranty. For a limited time, only from McCoy's Heating and Air. The first one's gonna be Elijah Ramsey. Elijah, unable to reach so far in this game. Ketchum will come back out for another inning of work, and there it is. Elijah Ramsey's on with a single right through the glove underneath Kitterman, and out into center field, a good play that snuck right underneath the defensive player at second base. So Ramsey's on the board with a single, and Dylan Barrett will now get his fourth plate appearance. He's had a great day so far. A single came around to score in the second inning. Had a single, was left stranded in the fourth inning, and flew out deep right field in the sixth inning. We'll see what he's able to do here. Infield playing in the middle of the dirt. He's going to show bunt, and he's going to drop it into foul territory. Bulldogs up by five, looking to slam the door here. Move to one game above 500 with a win today. An opportunity to take the series here against West Alabama. Shade is directly on the eyes of the catcher or the pitcher Ketchum. And he's going to show bunt again. Barrett able to drop it. It lands right in front. They're going to take it to second base, take the lead, a runner, and sail it into the first base dugout. So a wild throw there by the shortstop Newman. But he's going to reach on a fielder's choice. The goal is to move Ramsey over to second base, but Barrett is the one that survives as he drops the bunt mere inches in front of home plate. Fletcher just takes the lead runner. It's going to bring up Matthew Autry as Ramsey is eliminated from the base path. So one on, one out, still over there at first base. Same situation except Barrett is now the runner at first. And we're going to see Matthew Autry get his fourth plate appearance of the game. He grounded out to the, the pitcher in the second inning. Grounded out to third base in the fourth inning. Both of those were bunts, attempts, and trying to move his runner over. We'll see if Barrett tries to steal or what the Bulldogs decide to do here as Autry was picked off after he singled in the sixth inning. A very sacrificial player here 
for the Bulldogs early in the innings, moving the guys over, but he had a single of his own. Going home with it, just inside there to Matthew Autry. So two balls, no strikes, one out here. Bottom of the eighth inning. Will Allen Smith from the top of the lineup standing on deck. And a good pickoff attempt there by Ketchum. Horton unable to apply the tag as he bobbles it. Slips out of the glove. From the stretch is Ketchum. Autry is going to take it right to the third baseman. Dejon has it. He takes it over to second, over to first base, and it's going to be a 5-4-3 double play, a missile over to Dejon at third base, and he handled it with ease. Jumps over the line, heads back to the first base dugout, and the Bulldogs go down 1-2-3. To the top of the ninth we go, bring in the closer. It's time to ring the bell. The Bulldogs have a chance to win it. Your life, your home, your business, your future. Focusing on you, West Tennessee Bank strives to serve its clients in every season of life. With vast experience in personal and business banking, we take pride in guiding you through significant events. At West Tennessee Bank, we help you realize your dreams. West Tennessee Bank is a division of Decatur County Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. West Tennessee Bank, focused on you. Dynamics Physical Therapy, your elite provider in sports medicine and performance. Now serving communities throughout West Tennessee. Here we go to the top of the ninth inning. We're bringing in Jamal Allen to take the keys to hopefully close out this game. And right behind the plate, we have a defensive substitution. Ben Smith will be entering the game as the catcher here for the Bulldogs to finish out this one. Jamal Allen so far this season has made his impact with the Bulldogs after playing with the Prospect League team, the Rockabillies, here in Jackson over the summer. He's a 3.86 ERA. He's appeared in only three games, and he has some gas where he throws. Man, he is fast. He brings a quick fastball, but sometimes he struggles a little bit with his control. If he's got it, he is lights out. We'll see what he's got today as that one's going to be in the dirt away from him. Three balls, no strikes. He's throwing it. He's bringing the heat, but he's unable to get the control here. He's thrown two and one third innings so far this season. He's walked four batters. He's hit one with a pitch of the 13 that he's faced, but he has struck out three. Last time he pitched was on Tuesday at Henderson State. He's going to throw that one right down the middle of the pipe here for a called strike one. So three balls, one strike. Down to their final three outs. They will turn it to the one, two, and three hitters here for the Tigers. Newman leading off. Vogler on deck. And we've got Kitterman in the hole as Jamal Allen walks. Newman and one aboard here. Only three outs away from a Bulldog win. And Allen's just got to keep the control dialed in. Bulldogs have a... Someone warming up in the left field bullpen. It kind of looks like Ryan Evans pitched in yesterday's game. One. Can't totally tell up here from the booth. But they're just got a little bit of insurance out there. Allen now pitching from the stretch. Puts that one right down the middle of the plate. A great pitch there by Jamal. Allen out of Birmingham, Alabama. Transferred here after spending some time at Dillard University. Graduated from Ramsey High School. Played two years of baseball there. Played collegiate ball at Wallace State Community College before going to Dillard. Finishing out his collegiate career with the Bulldogs. He contributed to a 2023 GCAC Conference Championship, as well as a 2021 Black College World Series All-Tournament second team placement. College 9 first team as well. Quite a few 
accolades here for Allen as he joins this Bulldog pitching staff. Here's a throw down by Ben Smith. He's going to have him, and that's going to be a quick and easy throw down there to eliminate Newman from the base path. A great throw down by Ben Smith, the catcher who comes in here in the ninth inning. Canyon Pace caught the first eight innings, and Newman just wiped clean. Squeaky clean on the base path here as Newman is thrown off. He tried to steal, and he was thrown out by about a mile away. So Vogler here at the plate now has no runners on. That was something that would be able to get things started, and Allen now doesn't have to worry about that walk anymore. So Vogler popped out to the catcher in the first inning, popped out to the second baseman in the third inning. He walked and was left stranded at second base in the fifth, and then flew out to the shortstop in the seventh inning. That one's going to be way up high, and the count will go full here to the center fielder for the Tigers. Three balls, two strikes, one out here to Vogler. Allen remaining in the stretch, even though there is no base runner on anymore, and that's going to be hit down the third baseline foul. Good placement there by Allen. Throwing that one right down the middle. So now he's going to look in, get the call from Smith, wave it off. Didn't like the first pitch. We'll see what the second one is. Here's a delivery. A swing and a miss there by Vogler, and Allen's got two in just as many batters as Vogler goes down swinging on a full count. Tigers now down to their final out of the game. Bulldogs knocking on the doorstep of moving one game above 500. Currently, they are at 5-5 five and five on the season, 1-1 one and one record in the Gulf South Conference. This would put them at 2-1. and one. Of course, this weekend being a conference play tournament, and it's going to be Houston Kitterman who has the opportunity to try to get the Tigers back in this game. Bulldogs looking to slam the door, walk away with a victory, and the bullpen is now watching Allen dominantly take control of this ninth inning as the guys warming up there have put the jacket back on and they're going to let Allen finish this one out. Center fielder Autry moving significantly more towards right field. Basically playing in right center now. Here's a delivery from Allen. It's going to be upstairs. Ball two. Softball game behind us. The girls have a 2-1 lead. They got two runs on three hits. Lady Tigers have one run on two hits. Walked it off earlier today. See if they can go get the sweep this afternoon. Bulldogs have a good day. In there for a called strike one on Kitterman. Kitterman singled in the first inning. He flew out to center field in the third inning. He walked, was left stranded in the fifth inning, and was caught stealing in the seventh. Here's the pitch to him. It's going to be a dribbler back. And down to the final strike here are the West Alabama Tigers. Jamal Allen on the mound, one strike away, two balls, two strikes, two outs. He's facing the number three batter and just outside Ben Smith framed it, thought that he had strike three and the count will go full here against Kitterman. Really good pitch there by Jamal Allen, trying to get him to chase on the outside. Snuck it right outside the zone, trying to paint the corners. And here's the full count delivery. It's going to be hit to the third baseline. Right past the glove of Mitch Sisk, out into left field. It's going to be at least two bases here for Kitterman. He's rounding first, will walk into second with ease. Grabbing it is Elijah Ramsey, and the Tigers stay alive here in the top of the ninth inning with two outs on a Kitterman double. Now it goes to Dejan. Chase Dejan, the third baseman, up to the plate. In any other day, this is the guy you want at the plate, but today he has choked in two consecutive clutch moments. We'll see if he has a third opportunity to turn it around. A big lead out there at second base by Kitterman, and here's a delivery. It's going to be in there for a called strike one. In the fifth inning, Dijon had the bases loaded. 
Vogler was on second. Kitterman was on first, and Wood was on third. Dijon struck out swinging. In the seventh inning, he had a situation first and third. Newman was on third. Kitterman was on first. He struck out swinging. We'll see if he can do it again here to end the game as well. Jamal Allen looks back. He checks his runner, and that's going to be way outside the zone. It's a fastball. Gets away from one ball, one strike, two outs here in the top of the ninth. Down to their final strike. Kitterman was able to laser sneak a double right past the glove of Mitch Sisk. Right down the third baseline, a great hit there, and here's a delivery. A big swing and a miss. Down to their final strike again. Can Dijon strike out for the fourth time today? That is the question of the hour. Struck out in the first, struck out in the fifth, struck out in the seventh. We'll see if he can do it here again. For the cleanup hitter, he's down to his final strike. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Will Allen Smith going back to his position, and it's going to be a little blooper. Out towards second base. Good thing he made the transition, and Will Allen Smith has it, and that's going to be the third out, and to end the game, the Bulldogs move back into the win column. They've got a positive record. They're above 500 in this season, and a great play there by Will Allen Smith to end the game. He adjusted right at the last moment. He was playing close to second base making sure that the runner Kitterman wasn't going to go anywhere. He dropped back to second base. He shifted out right towards the center of shallow right field. He makes it. That's going to be it for the Bulldogs. They win again. They win the series here against West Alabama this weekend. They split yesterday, and they take the rubber game here today. The win will go to Noah Tony. He gets his first win of his Bulldog career, he went four and two-thirds innings, throwing 82 pitches, giving up three hits, four strikeouts, and faced 20 batters. The loss will go to Holland. Graham Holland, the lefty senior, threw only one-third of an inning oh so long ago. And he only recorded one out and also records the loss. The Bulldogs win 6-1. to one. Bulldogs scored six runs on 12 hits, no errors. And West Alabama scored one run on seven hits. One error. We'll see you guys back here soon for some more action at Fezmeyer Field. But that's all it for today. Good job to the Bulldogs. They take the series. They move to six and five on the season. Have a great rest of your afternoon. Thank you to everybody from Forty Road Studios. That's it for Ethan Voss here at Bulldog Baseball. Have a great rest of your afternoon. Good night. You trade in your car. You trade in your house. So why not get some equity back from your old HVAC system? McCoy's Heating and Air will now give you up to $2,000 trade-in for your old unit, plus a free 10-year parts and labor warranty with the purchase of a qualifying York system. That's right. Trade in your old unit and get up to $2,000, plus a free 10-year parts and labor warranty. For a limited time, only from McCoy's Heating and Air. The award-winning Ball Game Blitz Sports Network from Worthy Road Studios. Over 750,000 views in 2023. We're where you need to advertise. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and join over 4,500 subscribers watching local sports. The Jackson Rockabillies, Union University, Bethel, USJ, TCA, Jackson Christian, Sacred Heart, and Peabody. Multi-camera broadcasts, slow motion instant replay, on-screen scoreboard and graphics, and professional announcers. Thanks to our sponsors who make it all possible. The Ball Game Blitz Sports Network from Worthy Road Studios. The premier sports broadcast network in West Tennessee. Christian College or starting the college search process, I want to take a second to tell you about my school, Union University in Jackson, Tennessee. Union is a private four-year university known for its rigorous academics, Christ-centered community, and the success of its graduates. My favorite part about Union is the faculty. The professors here are so intentional about helping students grow not only academically, but also spiritually. You should check out Union for yourself. Come for a visit. I know you'll love it. At Union University, you'll be transformed.
whatever they went through, they went through together. Welcome, guys. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. When you hear our name, know that it comes with a promise to give back to the community that built us. A promise to provide a human touch in a world that is becoming more automated. Ever since we put our roots down in Jackson in 1996, we have aspired to be community focused by supporting programs and organizations that are important to our city. At First Bank, it is our mission to be present in our community and to continue the belief that when you bank local, you get more. Member FDIC.